Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PSR podcast, season three, episode five, where we're going to go over everything PSR related for the last five weeks or so. We took a week off last week because of the Fire League Green Tournament, uh, which we'll recap today. Uh, my name's Iron. I'm one of the hosts of today's show. Along with me are all my fellow co hosts, Jordan97. Hello. Tucker. Hello. And Etiquette. Hello. And we have. We have technically three guests once, uh, to this week. One of them is going to be pre-recorded. We're going to play their interview during the uh, intermission. Uh, we have Amoeba. Yo. Who is here. Uh, Wave, who is also here. Hi. As well as Zeke, who's going to be our uh, intermission uh, interview. So uh, I guess we'll start things off here. Um, got quite a lot happening. A lot of Gen 3 type um stuff going on uh first off we'll talk about the uh tournament where we have two of our finalists here with us today so you guys can uh, talk about the tournament oh you go ahead way by my contribution to this tournament was very little so this says the man who made finals yeah yeah and then uh, uh, quit about 40 minutes into the race <laughs> yes but you can't argue it wasn't extremely entertaining yeah no i'm, I'm quite happy with making finals but I was definitely the the dark horse of the three. Anna and Wave were absolutely the favourites to win this. Uh, not at yeah. all surprising. I went out last. Yeah, but... I uh, <laughs> I was not expecting to get past semis. Mockwing and Math Genius are both much more practiced than me in Leaf Green, and honestly speaking, probably better at the game. <laughs> well, Math Genius like specializes in it. He does an emerald now. Mockwing is extremely talented at the game, and he's I think he's second place on the leaderboard for any percent. If I remember mm -hmm. right. Yes, I think he he had leaderboard record for a little bit because Shiru took a while to upload his PB. But yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he was the top. He was the top seed for the tournament as well. No, I don't know. Coming I mean, this wasn't exactly kept a secret, but the three of us agreed to just push full risk in the semis to get the best possible tournament time. Because uh, we thought that would be the most entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly speaking, you could have spun a, a three option wheel and you would get about equivalent odds as how who would win that race. So that was very fun. Yeah, that was it was definitely a finals quality race. People in that race. Ridiculous. Yeah. But I guess uh or like I think like in terms of like the first thing to talk about was like I guess it would be the squirtles, because like how or like in general, because what was your like setup for doing squirtles? Because I know some people were just Finding the first quarter they could get and taking that, and people were pushing for the really high. So, uh, me, but you want to uh, talk <laughs> yeah, about what like you did? <laughs> Allow me to explain this one because I very much set the standard. Um, I, from the first tournament I was in, like which is a couple of years ago now, I was running Charmander, and Charmander really, really benefits from better stats. I got into the habit of going to like 50k frames, whereas like if you're doing the manip in a run, you go to about 6k. Uh, and that's like a, a minute and a half wait and 50k is something like 15 minutes and I never really stopped when I changed to turtles so I still look at like 100k frames and wait half an hour for really good turtles yeah, um, so I was the hour. <laughs> I was the first person to get a turtle minute for this finals and you have to post them in a channel so that the organizers can verify them um, so obviously Anna and Wave knew as soon as I had my turtle and mine was pretty nuts um, the lowest like stat is... 30s or something? Yeah, 30, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, get that'll do. And 30 speed is the better option. Like, it's better than 31 for a race. Yes, it is. So, and then, so I posted that on Wave went, oh, for God's sake, I'm going to have to look for a good turtle now. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think I had the best one, although Anna's is a bit deceptive because he was doing late search, so the speed doesn't matter as much in that one. But Anna's is still great. Mm -hmm. Waves is still great. Where you know you're talking margins at this point. Yeah. You mentioned that 
30 IV speeds better than 31 for races. Why? Yes. Yeah, so, so it's a complicated interaction between two fights, Sabrina and Bruno. Um, if you want to outspeed Sabrina without next speed, you basically need 30 or 31. 29 can work, but it's hard, kind of hard to get that in a race. Um, so you're, if you want to outspeed Sabrina, which is really good, you know, um, you want 30 or 31. But then if you get both of those need the Carbos in order to outspeed Sabrina. Uh, you need to pick that up. And if you have 31 speed and you pick up and use the Carbos, you actually have too much speed for Bruno. Because uh, you want to be slower after a Rock Tomb so that he starts using Earthquake. And with 31 speed and the Carbos, you speed tie after a Rock Tomb, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So there's and a that, chance that And that, that you... throws off all of your strategies for the Bruno fight. Yeah, you stop um, being able to take, like, predictable damage, because he could Rock Tomb, he could Earthquake. Yeah. And, the, and the, the damage the, difference is, like, 15 and 40. Uh, like, 30, 32 or so, but yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, and it's it's more than that, because if you're speed tied after one Rock Tomb, and he Rock Tombs again, if you X-Speed, you're back to being speed tied. So, it, you could have... Uh, some issues there so yeah the way you avoid that with 31 is you don't get the carbos because having a bad bruno fight is awful so you do have the um, option so that basically of... means that the only speed value that can outspeed sabrina is 30. well you can do five speed evs on 31 but then you're absolutely yes. locked into killing an extra encounter and fighting josh and fighting I... josh and moon is terrible on a race i'm brushing over <laughs> some nuances that come more into playing any percent yeah. Uh, like just the PB attempts because in a race, you really don't want to be fighting Josh, and it's risky to fight Rocket, which gives one speed EV. Um, yeah. and the reason for that is a very simple concept, which is in a race, saving is slow, so generally it's good to not save. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you uh. If you can just fight Bug Catcher or Hiker, that's generally good. <laughs> so the issue is just quick attacks from Josh, then, I assume? Yeah, so uh, I, yes. I I actually did the Josh fight in semifinals, which was a mistake in hindsight, um, because I had, I had 12 HP, and I was like, well, even if I take two quick attacks, I'm still alive. One quick attack is Torrent, and I won't have Torrent afterwards. So that was my justification at the time. Mm -hmm. And I walked up, saved, went into the fight, got quick attack crit into quick attack and died. <laughs> so the save yeah. lost me a ton of time over the other fights where I could have just done bug catcher and not even had to save. And then I died anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's just the the like variance you get with like like that or rock. Rocket's a bit different because Rocket's like a two turn fight, and sometimes you just have to do that, even in a race. It's like yeah. sometimes just the best option. But realistically, you want to do bug catcher. That's the thing about race routing, and also marathon routing applies there as well. You need to be confident that you can keep going, no matter what happens. That That's the most important thing when you're routing things. Um, and if you get later in a tournament, you say, okay, maybe it's okay to take some acceptable risk threshold. But usually that's a later game thing, uh, because you don't want to be out of a race at the very beginning. So there are two, you know, there are two ways to be guaranteed safe uh, on a fight. One of them is to know that no matter what RNG you get, you cannot possibly die. And the other is to save. I guess the third is to have a revive in your back pocket. So three ways. Um, and saving is by far the slowest of those, generally speaking. Um, so in some places, it's unavoidable. You don't really have any other options. You know, Sammy, Liam, Brock come to mind. Anything where you set up a ton of X items that you can't afford to lose. Yeah. <laughs> to be a save as well. Yeah, definitely. It's So when it comes to Moon, where you have four different options for fights, that's a lot more freedom than you normally get for routing purposes. And so that makes it very easy to try to avoid saves. Because, um, you know, you have other options you can go with, and they might be slower on average, but... 
if you're skipping a save, then, you know, that's all that time saved back. And so that's why, <laughs> that's a long-winded way of explaining why Josh is bad. Because you have no revive at that point, and you are always at low enough health to where you can die to that fight if you get unlucky enough. So that, that's why Josh is generally avoided, and my 31 speed is bad in races. Rocket is still kind of bad, but it's a little bit better because you do actually have the revive at that point. So you can, you can make a play where it's like, all right, I can't possibly lose here. Like, okay, there's just like, like a 0.1% chance you can lose if I can't get a fan of fan of fan You can take that fight and say, okay, I can't lose, but losing, losing my revive sucks, but maybe that's an acceptable risk at this stage in the tournament or so on. But, but that, I'm, I'm a fan of, of just bug catcher or even hiker. I, I, I don't know how many people fight hiker in the tournament, but I did around one because I was just not dealing with, with I think I did it in semis, I think. He was a hiker race of the entire way. I think when it comes to race routing, a lot of people value top end of fights more than they should, or maybe even average case. And they yeah. don't think about in a race, you have to consider the worst case. In a PB attempt, you know it happens, you reset, so what? But in a race, you don't have that option. Hey, I died to Bridge Rival. That's a cool fight. I died to that fight in every race that I did. Wow. Yeah, that is I, unlucky. I hate Bridge Rival. <laughs> That's not true. Literally the Isn't moment that? the tournament started, my luck on Boat Rival completely inverted. Prior to the tournament, I could not hit Mega Kick on Boat Rival ever. And the instant the tournament started, I started hitting all my kicks, including at my PB attempts. I got my gold for the Surge Split in the, the quarterfinals race. Because I just decided that I was behind enough at that point that I would just go for everything and everything worked out. You were talking early Surge, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. My actual, like, Splits gold is the race. I did. Just because I was That's like, ah, sod it, off we go. <laughs> oh, fair enough, Anna. <laughs> so what was the, so what, this is a fairly like exciting term with lots going on, what was the biggest surprise across the whole tournament for you guys, do you think? Ekman doing as well as he did, considering he picked up the game the weekend before the tournament started, and he was one of the semi-finalists. It kind of shouldn't been yeah. a surprise because Ekman's very good, but like to go from basically having a week to learn the game to be in top nine is really good. Yeah, he is definitely very impressive. My pick would be Dark somehow seeing the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to explain that one, there's the Fire Red Leaf Green Tawny uh, server has a Pickums chat where you can guess all of the results from each races and i don't even know who dark is i'll be honest and i know who they are now but before they started i had no idea who they are and they just started guessing races i think they won the entire pickums because they, they just kept guessing oh. it correctly and it's like, they might have fallen did. to second place at the end i can't remember <laughs> but they were they were leading by a long way like the start i think, of the semis. He, I think so they something. got 97 out of 100 in round two <laughs> or something like that and yeah, just no like knowledge of one. who was in the races or who was doing what. Like, they were just like, I'm going to pick the names based on what I like. Yeah, because there were a lot of upsets too, um, in the first couple of rounds at least. So, a lot of top top runners finishing third or even second. So, that's not surprising in a Pokemon speedrunning tournament that there are upsets. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, but I think <laughs> more, more so than the previous years, I would say. Having been involved with the last couple of years, not this year mm -hmm. though. But... Yeah, I remember like Ch uh, Chippy was also a new player, right? And they did. Yep. Very well. Everybody was on board the Chippy hype train for a while. Yeah. Uh, he's moving to Emerald. I'm very excited for that. Mm -hmm. Math Genius also moving to Emerald. He's been there for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, finally get some of my content back. <laughs> I remember when there were like eight different people running Emerald. Good times. Yeah. Barrier Blitz did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, the uh, the finals were a bit of an interesting race. I was very quickly out. A combo of having a fairly bad start into murdered by Surge repeatedly. Um, you actually had the best yeah. run through Brock. Um, yeah, that was yeah, that was right. I assume you got bridge rivaled. No, I got so I had a bird but no rat. So I went into the grass after Mount Moon and That's got four, right. four Spearows in a row. I was, I was like, watching that. Yeah. Uh, that uh, it was a really yeah, it was a really good start until that point, and then I was awful. Yeah, can I remember that's where I took the lead. Yeah, and then I died to the uh, bridge rival, and then I think boat rival, and then surged like eight times. <laughs> so I was yeah, out. you died. I like I was in rock tunnel. I'm looking over, and you're dying to surge. It's like, oh man, this is <laughs> unfortunate. Anna's start overall was worse. He was still behind me after the Spiro thing. Um, mm -hmm. And it never... I mean, he, he played perfectly fine. It just never really got way better enough to catch up with uh, with your, like, okay start into really good mid-game. Yeah, my run was just mostly solid. I, I had the perfect setup for Surge, and then he just crit shot wave. <laughs> but I, I was able to recover. But the problem there is that I had to sack both of my slaves to uh, to keep that fight going. And so for the entire rest of the run, I had no backups. I couldn't revive anything. I could have bought a second revive in Lavender and then used it on one of my slaves so that the first revive I had actually did something. Uh, oh, wait, no, I used that revive. No, so I had to pick that, buy that revive and pick up the Safari revive. Just for a Koga revive that never really yeah, works out one. anyway. <laughs> and so I decided that that wasn't worth it. And so for the entire run past Surge, I was... I had nothing in my back pocket. I had to save for Martha because of it. Which Martha is... Martha and Koga, in my opinion, are the two most valuable fights the revive is for. Also, Bridge and Boat Rifle, I guess. Um, uh, but yeah, but yeah I, think... I, I, I had to full send that run. Because Anna kept kept it close through the entire run. I was never were, at any point where I could afford to. Yeah, you were neck and neck just out of Giovanni, if I remember right. Yeah, it was like ten seconds at most, and then he missed a blizzard on Venusaur. He was the one who died on Radiant Rival, and I didn't, yeah. and that was the major deciding factor. Sometimes it's how it shakes out. Yeah. I had that in my finals Koga fight. I didn't save for because I had the Lumberry. So my logic was there are very, this is an acceptable risk because even if I die, I can just fly back there and, you know, it's fine. I, it's not a dead run, just loses time. You're only really dead to poison. Uh, to, yeah. So to I crit, was, sorry. Yeah. Yes. The way I'm thinking of that is okay, assuming Muck goes standard, I die to crit sludge and that's it. Um, and that was my logic justifying not save. And then Muck uses Sludge. Uh, instead of, you know, Acid Armor Minimize, which he's heavily favored to do. And that messed up everything for that fight. I had about 30 seconds to collect my thoughts and figure out what the hell I was going to do when Weezing came around. Is it the range, uh, forehead? Yeah. No, I, uh, I did some... Yeah, damage calculator. Okay, even if I have Super Potion, I'm still mostly dead to two Sledges. But I have the second Super Potion, so I guess I can do that. And I'm only dead if I get poisoned, like, twice or something. As I decided to Super Potion. I had no idea that we was a new tackle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot about this. Yeah, you got tackle of all So Because I was at, like, eight health or something. And so, yeah, it's a 50-50 between Tackle and Sludge if they both kill, and I won the coin flip, and that that saved the fight for me. Because uh, then he, on second turn, he used Sludge, it poisoned, but I still had the Lumberry, and that was good from there. But that was, <laughs> the I was panicking. The second I saw Sludge on Muck, I would full you know, gears are turning in my head. What the hell do I do here? And I, I think I made the correct... I accidentally made the correct play because I didn't know a crucial piece of information. <laughs> in I'd say for, 
for future tournaments, can we have the forfeit box have the word forfeit in it? Because it just looks like I've been uh, segregated. <laughs> it's my own little corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. There was some justification in my head that was like, there's a reason why I didn't put it there. <laughs> and nah, that's and... fine. Uh, to be honest, the, uh, the tech and the streams, uh, the, there was a bit of a bumpy moment for the first round, but there's always going to be that as it's a bit of a learning experience. But honestly, the once you pass that the tech for the whole tournament was really good i'm so glad it got moved over to like psr tv rather than who we were with previously who should go unnamed it's just a way nicer atmosphere people were yeah i agree i i i, I watched it here and there and it was just really well organized i was kind of following how, along how things were going so uh really cool good job to everyone involved yeah, that first week and a half was definitely some of the most stressful. Learning the the, the 15 second delay thing was a game changer. Well, <laughs> well, the thing, it wasn't even like, it was like, originally it was seven and a half, I would say, too. And then for the most part, that was fine. Um, until it got to people on the west coast of the US. Like, well, you're not west coast now, are you? I don't think, but... Mountain time, mountain time, yeah. But still, you were, you you uh, like, you were one of the people that didn't knew that I should delay. But yeah, that was definitely one of the big game changes. Um, but yeah, it's just well, like I was very happy with everyone on. I like, like held over tech. They did a very solid job, which is nice. Nice that I didn't have to necessarily. You still be, did a whack of it. Yeah, I did, oh, I, I did, yeah, but I mean, when, when the two computers are in your house, yeah, and so I guess it makes sense. But you need to hire a server next time, I don't know. Uh, still, oh, kind of, eh. <laughs> I'm not tech. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I, that's not even a tech thing. I'm thinking money. <laughs> yeah, but, I am uh, finances. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, to be fair, I am in the middle of trying to set up an RTMP server on our own end, Ooh. which is about going as well as I would expect, even if I've not done it before. But um, that should hopefully make things because I think like part of the reason why it was ended up being fifteen seconds was I think like the host server is technically in the US, and the US had to like bring it over into the UK that kind of the wording is not right there I know what I mean I'm just terrible at explaining but um basically hopefully it'll just be a bit less than 15 seconds next time is the hope I think we were all pretty used to to that kind of time anyway from the previous hosts they were <laughs> something like 30 or 40 seconds so I think 15 yeah. was fine for this especially with you like restreaming it through Discord anyway, which was yeah. like instant. So. I mean, yeah, for, for tournaments, it's not as big a deal. I guess it's more for the the marathon that tends to be more of a problem yeah. because when you're trying to sync up with a webcam, if someone's speaking, you can only do a maximum delay of five seconds for audio. So you need to train, ideally, keep it within five. If you're doing it like the way we handle it. Anyway, this is not the topic, I guess. <laughs> this is behind the scenes stuff. Um, I guess with the, the race, though, I wanted to speak to your look a bit more, Miva. Because mm -hmm. there was a lack of it. <laughs> <laughs> surge went great. <laughs> but I committed to early surge from the start of the tournament, so I'm not going to sit here and whinge about it. Like, at some point, it's going to get you. It got Pokey Guy. Like, a couple of rounds before that yeah. where he died he died like twice and one of them took a minute and a half to die or whatever but yeah i died like four times i mean to be honest i could have died less i could have played like even the first fight out a bit more my logic for it was when i reset on the first one was if i get a great fight second try i'm still set up really well i'll still be ahead of annan probably 
Um, so I'd rather reset, have the revives, and play the end game riskier than try and salvage this mess of a fight. Uh, and then it happened again in the second attempt, and by that point I was just like, eh. <laughs> I'm just going to keep pressing reset until I actually get a good fight now. Uh, and it took four or five attempts. Because this fight is spooky. Yeah. Uh, I just kept getting bad. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I couldn't even tell you exactly how. There was many different ways. There was things like that where I potioned to 39 and hoped for the low roll. And I think the roll was something like 37 to 40 something. Mm. Um, and if you low roll, then you get you can super potion any quick attacks and you can go for the second yeah. hit. But, um, Wave did this same strat for the first time in finals, which I actually agree with. Um, you mean I think with, No, uh, just early surge. Oh, you did, you did late surge for the rest of the tournament. Um, yes, I did. Yeah, but knowing that Anna's going to do late surge, I think doing early is such an advantage. Uh, but yes. you do have to get a bit lucky. <laughs> And Wave almost got lucky. <laughs> I uh, I found it somewhat interesting that estimates for early surge time save is somewhere around 45 seconds, and I won the race by 48 seconds. So, route difference. Yeah, Anna's uh, late surge times were super consistent, so I don't, I don't really fault him for doing what he knows best as well. Uh, but yeah, you, if you live by early surge, you're going to die by it as well. I'm not surprised it happened eventually. You usually Just die. Earlier. <laughs> Normally people are uh, doing this round in quarterfinals, if not earlier. But yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's completely correct to do late surge. You know, unless your competition is insane, like mine yeah. was in finals. And and it's semi-finals, but we all agreed to all do late surge. I don't know, Nancy, just ask a good question. Were you uh, nervous at any point in the final wave? Oh, of course. I, uh, I have this fun thing with my body where anytime I'm on a good pace late, I can no longer feel my hands. Oh. And that starts happening earlier and earlier as time goes on. I thought you were so gonna say. Started around Giovanni. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the shakes. I used to on really good pace. I used to get the shakes. My whole body would like mm. almost nervously shake itself, and I wouldn't That's be able happened to, stop to me that. once. I don't remember what it was for, but that has happened to me once. But no, what I normally get is my hands start getting extremely tingly. Well, that's neat. Uh, to the point where I can no longer hold them like relaxed, or uh, or feel them. And let me tell you, that makes it really fun when you need to select the, the right move, otherwise you die, and you can't feel yourself touching the D-pad. Yeah, that does not sound fun at all. But to be fair, like, you still, you had a, like, even, I guess with that, you had a ridiculous, like, you didn't do, like, you always won every race, I think, right? Uh, I got second, no, I won my first race, yeah, that's right. So like, I guess technically you were the only person to go 100% the tournament. It was only it was only him and Anna and the. Well, Anna won lost every... the finals, so. Well, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is that going? Because I didn't, I didn't win every one of mine. I was in like mm -hmm. second on one of them, so. Because oh, yeah. oh yeah, because I went against Anna and Anna in the first round. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. No, my first round. I made a miscalculation and thought I was safe in Moon, but forgot that I didn't have either of my slaves yet. So oh, you went all the way back to Mom. I reset then, yeah. all the way back to Mom. I had yeah. to run all the way back. And do some on-the-fly routing, which worked out fine. You just get the extra... You, you get the Carbos or Calcium. I think it's a Calcium in, uh, in Rocket Hideout, and you sell that, and it fixes everything. To be honest, the money thing, I was really surprised because I made that silly mistake where I forgot to candy before Misty in round two, and I was like panicking about money. You just get handed a nugget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just hand you a nugget so you can just sell that and be fine. Like, you never lose more than like five grand. Yeah, it, it, some routes sell that nugget. Um, yeah, I started doing that towards the end. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah. getting extra accuracies is goated, I am. Yeah, I started doing six accuracies. Um, I think you can definitely make a case for nine. Yeah, there's a couple places where taking that extra setup turn is annoying. Uh, yeah, the one on Soul Rival giving him an extra turn to crit is a little bit dodgy. Mm -hmm. but saving, like skipping having to save is just so nice. For sure. And later rounds, I just risked that. That's the thing about races. When you get to later rounds, you eventually have to take some risks if you want to win. Yeah, like, I think, if I remember correctly, like, there was a lot of times where you didn't save where other people... Like, I, did you save for the bridge rival in the final wave? In the finals, no. Specifically because it was the finals. Um, the reason to save for bridge rival is because having the revive... Just having it in your bag is extremely powerful. Not even using it, just having it. Um, and losing it on bridge rival... You lose, you know how strong that is and so it's arguably better just to, to save and reset if you die than to uh than to go and use the revive and continue without one in finals i don't see that as an option you need you need to be playing in finals you need to be playing for a fast time in some regard and <laughs> playing to have a revive later is not something i could justify doing Yeah, definitely. But uh, to, I guess one of the things was specifically with Bridge Rival, you didn't save, you got through fine, and we were saved. And I died. It did not go as fine, yeah. Yeah. The it's... rich get richer. <laughs> that was a common theme. The rich get richer. That was just, I think that was something I started saying on commentary in the first tournament, and it just kept like latching on because it does seem, you do seem to get rewarded for being bold in this game sometimes. Uh, like realistically someone who has done an early surge in every race should not realistically make it to the finals because they should have died for that at some point but hey here I am <laughs> Actually, cause like yeah you've been in a fair few tournaments me but was this your first final uh yes hold on let me think yeah I definitely didn't I've made semis in the red tournament and i made semis last year's fire red tournament but yeah this is the first finals uh nobody's done an emerald tournament yet so i'm not a favorite in any of these <laughs> did get the emerald uh barrier blitz though and oh look i lost a wave again <laughs> uh, what can i yeah. say i'm good at uh routing for these events good at the video game yeah it's I just enjoy tournaments. I'm like debating learning Let's Go just for the new Let's Go tournament. Right. It is. I mean, it's a very simple route, in my opinion. <laughs> so. it, yeah. It's more spending 50 quid on the digital version of the game to actually be competitive is the thing that's putting me off. <laughs> uh, if you actually technical on something to help, um, I mean, you've obviously got to spend money, but like the uh, you can get the two game vouchers for 84 quid. And if you want to get, like, say, Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of the Wild, I keep saying Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, <laughs> you're like, Breath you might of the Wild too. that. That's 60 quid. And effectively, you've only oh, paid 24. If you, if that just, that's just an option. Obviously, you have to put up for an 84 quid, but... Mm, yeah, yeah. Take a look. I feel like we're sidetracked slightly. <laughs> <laughs> we always say <sidetrack>. Yeah. <laughs> the fun of the podcast. Um, but actually, I think because I know we did start a bit late. How long has we actually been like live? Like, but it's probably coming up to like half an hour. It's quarter to nine, so it's probably closer to forty minutes. <laughs> yeah, you've been live for forty-five. Yeah, for live forty-five. But I know it started like at. Eight, but then I think it's been like 10 minutes. Either way, it's been half an hour to 40 minutes, somewhere in that range. Um, I guess probably good to put like a bit of a bow on this so we can 
talk about the other, well, one of the other focus topics, yeah, Emerald Aim percent. Mm -hmm. But um, so I haven't gotten around to watching this run yet. I don't. <laughs> I mean, if you do want to watch it, it's on the uh, the PSR TV YouTube channel. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess to put a neat little bow on it. I've said that twice now. Um, what would you say would be some improvements you'd want to see for the next year's tournament? Um, to be honest, I like the way the tournament runs. I don't think it needs any significant changes. Um, maybe just more people about for helping on tech so that you don't have to do all of it, although we'd have to rely on you for all of it either. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt out too quickly is about the only thing I can think of. No, the tech itself was fine, I think. Um, I don't remember anything in, being too bad. In brackets, after the first round, go apply the qualifier. But uh, I guess um, I do. I don't remember what race it was because I do remember hearing someone mention about instead of maybe doing like the first like two minutes or something uh, until like. Oh yeah, I I'm a proponent of this. I think we should just start at Squirtle. I think the first two minutes is pointless. Uh, it's execution. I don't know too awful, but I'm fairly certain I had the the best. Like I, I figured out the timing for skipping the recap thing when you restart, which nobody else seems to be doing. Yeah, uh, I, never I, I got rewarded for a few seconds. It works. No, see, I got it every time. So I would, have, if you change that now, then I get punished for learning that. So no, I disagree. Get good at your intros, IMO. I mean. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's two minutes sure, of nothing. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> my, my reason for opposing it is we go through this whole song and dance of checking our ID and, you know, all this fun stuff. And then we just reset to the Squirtle we have saved anyway because it's not worth it to try to hit an actual Squirtle when you have a good one in your back pocket. To be fair, I think that was a legacy thing because in when the first tournament happened, a lot of people went for, like, tried to get the yeah. skip the save time save. And when yeah, I know it's a legacy thing. thing. I but, just think yeah. that's not a legitimate argument. <laughs> to keep oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm just explaining why I think it's not been addressed up until now. It's because he, also, I, I don't think, like, the, the meta's obviously shifted as we're into the third tournament where people are now going for race perfect turtles. Like, nobody yeah, was doing in the first deal. tournament. Well, in the first tournament, nobody was doing what I was doing, where it was like, I only take 30 speed and I only take, like, really good turtles. People were just treating it like they would races and just take any runnable turtle because they didn't want to put the effort into which is i mean it's fine but i wanted to put the effort into finding good turtles so i did yeah i mean the same i don't value my time i'll spend the time to get a good one <laughs> yeah i think it's just a, a meta change but yeah i could see the the interesting get being gotten rid of especially since i think the only person that went for a an in-race manip was kuka and I think he just didn't find a turtle, so it never really happened. <laughs> like, uh, but yes, I know what you mean. Like, I'm never going to look for another turtle because I'm never going to find one that's better than the one that I've got backed up. Like, I'm always going to have way too good a turtle in the save. Uh, also, I, don't know. I will try to get all your bird casters. I will try that. I tried doing it before, it just didn't have enough time to fully sort it out. But I did try. And we'll try to have that for the next one. But anyway. Um I think with that, unless anyone any of the other hosts have something that they want to bring up. No, that was good 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 recap. Good, good. So Amoeba, this is still you. Hi. So your Emerald Any percent rune. Um, I guess first off, uh, actually, very first thing, what bit actually is good to skip to because I don't know what to skip to for this. <laughs> uh, god, I don't I remember the run, <laughs> I'm probably right at the end to see the or towards the end to see the egg stuff for anybody that's watching that doesn't know how the glitched stuff works. So, if you go to yeah, around there, be good, okay. you get to see the, the buddies that I bought. As this is where we're about to start like bringing our health down and it's where a lot of the rng the run starts kicking in um everything up until this is very 
glitchless-esque. This really wasn't a very well executed run by my standards though, from what I remember. Um, I was chilling in Trulu's Discord um, and wasn't totally paying attention to the run at this point. I was just kind of going through the motions so that I remember like the maxi movement was pretty bad. I bonked a few times there. This is a new routing thing. You fight this trainer because he has two wormholes. Yeah. This was another one I discovered. This is just a nice. It's two guaranteed wormholes in the first place, but it's also the both level four, so it's guaranteed four recoil. Whereas ninety nine percent of the time, you're only going to be taking guaranteed three recoils. So if you need fours, this is a really useful trainer to fight. I mean, looking at his splits, and you are. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the greatest run you've had, even compared to PB. Yeah. So. My goal splits are based on a run that I had. Uh, my, no, my goal splits are based on my PB, which had my PB got first try would have been like a one eighteen thirty, but it ended up being third try with a a full reset up because of a bad egg. Um, so I ended up with a one twenty one thirty three. Yeah. Um, also, you say this run isn't good. The run he's going like trying to beat, which is mine, was like two minutes worse. Minute and a half. Yeah, boy. Like but at the same time, how many runs of this have I done compared to your, like, f that was your first run ever, and you were, like, yeah. messaging people about how stuff works <laughs> mid-run? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I, I don't think I actually messaged anyone in the middle of this run, because I, it was I, 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I keep saying that, and then you. I think we we talked about it on your stream the other day. You were like, "I don't remember messaging you," and I checked it. It was like, "Oh no, I've yeah. just made apparently made that up." <laughs> like, no, yeah, yeah, the story behind this, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I was bored one day. I was like, "I'm running Emerald." I was think I was running Sapphire at the time. And I was like, "I'll learn Emerald any percent. Why not?" Uh, so the run I finished was run eight on my attempt counter. Six of those were like Mudkip resets and died before Roxanne. The seventh died to Rival 2, and then the eighth world recorded. Yeah. Um, um, and there was a one, so Waves was a 121 flat. And then like mm -hmm. two days later, I got this 121.33 and was really salty because of how good the run was until yeah. the, the glitched portion. Previous um, record was a 124, if I remember right. Yeah, sounds sounds about right. Yeah, you, had, you, you took a good chunk of time off. Um, but yeah, the the real thing for this run is it all depends on the final like uh, egg. Um, it's a one in thirty two chance that you corrupt the right bit to corrupt the egg in a way that works properly. So times in this run very much come down to how quickly you get the egg, uh, and getting a high level time in this is mostly a case of getting as many decent times as you can into the late game. By the way, for those uh, who don't know, we have to kill. Four Wurmples, four Pooches, is that yes, right? that's right, yeah. Uh, and that gets the correct amount of EVs on Abra, so that his... The Abra's, like, stat values are perfectly lined up for arbitrary code execution. Oh, this was a thing as well. I, I got really lucky, because I... So I, when I left the bug catcher fight, I had f a 16 HP after the candy, which I need to take 15 recoil, um, which is five lots of three recoil and three is pretty easy to guarantee but the five of them is a lot and i yoloed a takedown on a level three pooch which is more likely to be three recoil but can be four and got four um so then i was like oh my god i've got to try and figure this out now and try and just get lucky with the recoils so i bopped a zigzagoon back there like i did um and then here i just looked into a wild level four worm pool which is like three yeah. percent or something <laughs> i was like oh cool okay um, yeah. but if that hadn't happened this time would have been like way worse uh, you can see me like losing a lot of time on this split um because i don't actually split until i teleport away so i'm already like a minute behind ideal um and then this is where we start doing all the glitch setup uh and oh, yeah, this is spoiler a... i guess the it's a palm egg here right no, this is the HP up. Oh, it's the HP up. I think when you did your run, we, you used to go and get the HP up where Sapphire gets it in yes, the Sturf Tunnel. Correct. Yeah, and then I found that was apparently an HP up, and I was like, oh, this is way quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I, I end up getting second try egg with this. Which... Yep. One in 32 chance, and each try is like 
what, 30 seconds best case, a minute best case? Uh, what is it? It's 30 seconds, yeah, if uh, if you don't get a bad egg. If you get a bad egg, mm -hmm. it's a full, like, two minutes to reset it up. It's gross. Yeah. Um, so that's the joy of this category. And so I learned this category because that sounded fun to me for a category that I don't, like... My thought process was, I'm going to put no effort into this because ha ha, 1 in 32 meme category. <laughs> And then you were punished and, uh, because you got perfect luck immediately. Yeah, now I have the best glitch hit rate of everyone in the community. Yep. <laughs> I am I'm fairly certain the only two people on the any percent leaderboard that haven't hit first try egg are me and Worcester. I mean, someone I got it in a race, right? Two people, yeah. Kurt got it in one of our races and Katanese got it in. I think both of their PBs on the leaderboard are their race PBs with first try. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, actually, Macwing might not have first try. I could be wrong on that. But yeah, it's like I mean, I've got, still got like second second try in this and third try in my old PB is still really really good. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and complain. Um, and I would I would have been arguably more frustrated if this got first try because it would have just been like a what a high one eight no a low one nineteen like sub one twenty is really good. I'm glad the record's under that now, but. Like I do eventually want to try and go for one, one eighteen sub one eighteen, but mm -hmm. I'm just glad that this time is not horrific. Now. What's that Abra? Oh, so you have to you have to send out Abra as the last viewed Pokemon in a fight, because then you're going to deposit it and effectively kill Marsh Tomp with the Pomeg Berry, so that it tries. So it goes, oh, Marshtomp is dead, we'll send out the next available Pokemon, which was in slot 3 because it was Abra. But then Abra's been deposited, so it really doesn't know what to do at that point. Yeah, everything we're doing right here is essentially writing machine code, so that when we confuse the game, <laughs> it looks at game data and thinks, oh, these are instructions for what I should do. Uh, so that's why, you know, we, uh, we're naming these boxes... Basically, everything we're doing at this point is setting up for confusing the game into looking at game data and thinking it's instructions. Shout out um, to Mert, who did the, the work on this code and the route in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the way we break this game, I mean, like, kind of talked around it a bit, but the Pomic Berry. Increases one of your stats, but lowers your HP. It might increase happiness, lowers HP. Yeah. Uh, and so if you're at one HP when you use it, it's possible for it to lower you to zero HP. And the way the game is coded, it only checks to see if you white out at the end of a battle, like in a battle or something like that, or like maybe poison ticks as well. That would make sense. It doesn't check like every frame or anything. It checks under specific circumstances. So there, I just you... lowered HP with one HP on me, and so it lowered yeah. its max HP and reduced its current HP by the same value, mm -hmm. which leaves and me at so, zero. Using the Pomic Berry is not a case where it checks for uh, if you're if you have a living party member or not for whiting out purposes. So when you go into a battle, it tries to throw out something living, but that doesn't exist, so it sends out this thing, and then once you run, that's when it does its check to see if you have anything living yeah and we uh we overflow i don't know if it's overflow or underflow the bag which is what i was doing after i viewed marsh Tomp's yeah, summary. So like now now your instruction pointer is way way where it shouldn't be so it's it's well. fun bit from so i'm sat in a voice call now i think i'm speaking actually to truly at this point and i go oh if this uh if it's this try or next try it's probably record um, I think I say that as I'm going into this fight and truly goes, oh, watch this. <laughs> Straight into the egg. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can see why this takes... So, like, obviously the first try failed, so now I have to go back into the fight, do the summary, scroll out, fade out again, and then check the box. So it does take yeah. 25, so remember, 30 seconds. All right, right, there's a 1 in 32... It works every try. It's a 5 in 32, you get a really bad outcome. Only, so you only get the bad outcome on half of the trainer IDs. Half of the oh, time, those 5 in 32s don't give you anything. 
Wait, how did that hatch so fast? It's, it's random. <laughs> I've never crazy. had it hatch that quickly. I've never not. <laughs> I've never had insane. it hatch before I've left the center, but yeah. <laughs> it's like the quickest hatch ever. Also, when mine hatched, it was like a... Red? Oh, wait, do, do you get red Pidgeotto here? Oh, I got the Pidgeotto, but it's not red. I got a regular one. But you always yeah, got I got like an off-color Pidgeotto or something, if I remember right. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a stupid run, yeah. Don't run this category. So dumb. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to finally have a decent time and have record back again. I think this is the third time I've had record now. And I think this is a fairly solid time. I can't imagine anybody's going to grind to beat this anytime soon, unless Wave decides he doesn't want this. <laughs> unless you don't want your 100% hit rate on eggs anymore. Well, I value my 100% hit rate more than this record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. I, uh... Probably on board with that. Uh, I mean, with the amount of questions Alan has asked, Alan could do it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a really easy run to learn. Almost, I I, I kind of crap on it because it, the one in thirty two at its core is garbage. It's such but a meme. The rest of the run is just half glitchless. So if you want to do something that's like an hour and a half long, and you're just kind of fine with the run not technically finishing most of the time. Which is an odd mindset to have, but once you're in it, it really doesn't bother you. Honestly, I can just sit there and grind this, like effectively grind this category because I'm just playing the fun bits of the game. And then, oh look, I got a chance at the boring bit. Oh, it didn't work. Back to the fun bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Uh, if the 1 in 32 gets solved, I keep saying it, this will be the best glitch category in all of PSR. Because it's just pure execution from that point be so good yeah it sounds like a hard thing to try to figure out like i understand how computers work and this still baffles me how people route this it was uh it was effectively reverse engineered because a japanese yeah, runner did it with dots the c dot uh, mm. yeah i've got one last question mm-hmm what is your favorite box name? M. Floyd Leroux. That's the only one I know from memory, so yeah. <laughs> it's I, be I, I just I still remember M. Floyd all these years later. later. I've got I've got mnemonics for all of them. Although I don't remember them in order anymore, but I know like so there's M. Floyd Leroux, there's uh F N. There's so I, the, the thing that pops up in the names a lot is quotation marks into question mark. And I call I just call mm -hmm. that the set. So there's one that's like, it's a space, that set of characters, an M, another quote, and then RO. So I just call that space set tomorrow. Or something. This is how I have to try and remember everything. I've just got the, like I'm sat there and I'm doing the run and I'm just saying the dumbest crap as I'm filling these boxes in, like just to try and remember everything. I, I bet every two characters constitutes a byte in memory. I wonder what number quotation question mark corresponds to. It's so I know in a, in red any percent, there's a lot of a specific character, like a specific name that shows up. Yeah. And that's because it corresponds to just the zero byte. Yeah, so it's probably yeah. something like that where it's just a super common character. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, actually, to be fair, we could have probably talked about the Abra Manip in this because just about a week or two before this, I improved the Abra Manip in this run, which used to be a single frame window. It'll be about 18 minutes in, a rough guess. Uh, it used to be, yeah, it used to be like a frame perfect Manip. And then mm -hmm. I did a little bit of work. I really wasn't going to put much effort to it. So thankfully, it showed up very quickly um, and improved this into a three frame window now. So this is just way nicer. Like, there's no more, um, like, you know, this is a garbage category and you've got to hit a frame per frame in it. It's giddy, that's funny. Yeah. Um, this is quite, oh yeah, YOLO ball this as well because the time is crap. Funnily enough, Skitty is 50% into a great ball. Which is really weird because I would have thought it would be a high catch rate, but it uh, would have been a low catch rate. But this and a couple of other Pokemon have like the highest catch rate in the round. Interesting. Um, but yeah, there's a so the fact that it's a three frame manip is also, is great, but also the fact that it starts here means that we can catch the random Pokemon that we need as an extra first, which saves two seconds in a menu later when you don't have to swap Abra around. 
Mm-hmm. Which is a very similar time save to the reverse minute. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Did Mockwing help with this or am I misremembering? Um He might have just started implementing like mm, learning the minute. No, Mockwing didn't help me with this minute specifically, but at some point I had someone messaging me about this and they were trying to do the run without wireless adapter. And then I messaged Mackwing and was like, I know you adapted another, like, Exarion's old Abramanip to with adapter. Can you help me mm. adapt this one to without? And as it turns out, you just can't do it. <laughs> like, right. That's this, is, this is, like, adapter required. But yeah, he did help me out with that. Mackwing was really good with the... Especially, like, adapting the Manips. I'm, I don't have the right brain for it. I always, like, either take the stuff off wrong or, you know, like, I think it needs twice as many frames taken off and it doesn't I just make mistakes like that with when it comes mm. to the numbers. The offsets bit is the hardest one for me. I can find them and it's fine, but actually dialing them in for cons. Really I, nice. I, just, I just laughed a bit to myself because I was looking at your double spinners. I legitimately thought the game was paused. Or like the, the video was paused. Spinners are great. No, no the spinners were just stuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can see from the starting splits, this is not a very great start. 17 4x Roxanne is. Ugh. Yeah. That's the and thing it, about this category, though. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's this category is just a game of getting as many runs mm. to the end as you can uh, that mm. are passable. Mm. Yeah. Anyone else have anything they want to bring up or ask? Nope. Take that as a no. Right. Thank you though for both Amoeba and Wave for going through these two things through the early free tournament mm-hmm. and this. Uh, are you trying to stay around or are you either yeah, you I'll pick about? I yeah. actually I have to uh to head out for yeah. something. But yeah. Well thank you oh. for for joining then, Wave. Than having you on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you around. See you around. And whilst we go on a break, we're going to have the the third part of the focus topic, which is a follow-up on Zeke's uh, new Color World record because he's uh, improved it by... I just don't remember what the last one was. But like, one to two minutes. But it's a ridiculously good run. So yeah. Uh, he's done to... it again. Done it again. Yeah, uh, I believe he was also hanging out in Truly's Discord at the time. Yeah, that seems to be the place to be at the moment for offline yeah. runs. It's quite comfy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we talked about that for a bit. Uh, this is actually a shorter version of the, I guess, interview that we did. Uh, if you want to watch the full version, um, I did upload it. Unlisted on YouTube. I'm getting the link and trying to like stall for time once I get it. Uh, so yeah, if you want to watch it? I'll put I'll post the link afterwards as well. But that is the link to the full like 40 minute version. Uh, this will be just under 20 minutes though. But yeah, we will see you then. Thank you to whoever passed uh, this on to me in the podcast. Hello. And see, hello. How are you? Hey, it's uh, it's good. Pretty good. Uh, so yeah, obviously we've got we've got Zeke back again. Uh, pre-recorded this time for the podcast, but uh, yeah, you've uh, you've won up yourself. <laughs> uh, compared uh, to last yeah. Month. yeah I well. just uh, good. I was doing okay. some offline stuff and ran into a good run. Yeah. yeah. So. At what point did you like kind of realize you were on three twenty five pace? Was it after that Dakin split? Was it during this split later on? Uh, cause like after the Venus fight, after the Venus fight, I was like, oh, I'm forty seconds behind, and I lost like two minutes on this segment of the record. So it's like, yeah, it's like I, that. That was probably when, like, after Venus, I was like, oh, yeah, this is actually like ahead of record by like a minute, even though it says I'm forty behind. Because, like, and like, I guess, like, and then, like, kind of at that point, what were you thinking in terms of, like, 
Were you starting to get a bit more nervous? Were you just kind well, of still a bit whatever? I was... Again, I know it's an offline run, it's a bit different compared to Is like it... if you're playing it live and people are hyping yeah, it up a bit. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know. Uh, it was after, the, I like the end of this segment. So, because I mentioned I did the second Mirror V fight a bit differently. Mm. And I was like, at the end of the segment, because I don't have notes for that written down because it's like so rare. Basically, like, if you hit like a, if you can like hit, or if you can like reliably one hit KO, he has a level 45 Ludicolo. And normally we can't one hit KO it. So we like do a safety strat. We sacrifice Shadow Makahita and we set up. I like realized at like the very end of the segment that I can probably just not do that. <laughs> and I, I remember like I was like scrambling and checking like some ranges to make sure that I could actually do that. And I was like, wait, that, that actually works. I'm just going to do that. And I like after this segment was when I just sort of committed to like full risk, just sort of full go. I was just like, well, my stats allow me to do this funny thing, so might as well go for it. Yeah, fair. I mean, because it's very rare that you're going to get like a collab with a special attack stat this high. Uh, I remember I did something funny in this fight. Like, you need to knock Typhlosion into Blaze somewhere from the battle before this one to the battle after this one. Um, and how you do it just depends on your stats because normally you would use Espeon to hit Typhlosion into Blaze, but uh, because almost always here, Vibrava will do more damage to Espeon than Typhlosion, so it'll, it almost always attacks Espeon. Uh, but it was attacking Typhlosion here, and I just used it to knock me into Blaze instead, which was I think is a little slower, that's why I didn't get like a really good segment time or anything. but is definitely more reliable than like any other method of getting blaze here. Well, I mean, to be fair, when you when you can have reliability in a room like this, I mean, yeah, it's just it it's just hands. like for the blaze setup, you either want great special defense on Typhlosion or like really bad special defense because great special defense survives the full health psychic from SB. Uh, terrible special defense like just survives a um a full health side beam from sv so it's like if you're not on one of those uh edges it's like it can be really weird to set up blaze so i was just like you know what i'll i'll just give the vibrav an extra turn to just knock me into blaze here and it gave me really good health for it yeah so obviously like, you have like a really good section here you Managed to like save the uh, like oh, I guess save the uh, forty seconds you said on the mirror B fight. Uh, I don't know the exact number. Oh, yeah. Between thirty and forty, probably. Yeah, and you just have like really good sections, kind of throughout this ending bit. <laughs> I really, okay, that Gon's out segment. There's well, there's three fights in that segment, and. One of the, so this fight this is a fight I was I mentioned like my defense stat basically this fight is really funny. Uh, we have three different cases, three different ways to do this fight depending on Espeon's HP and defense, which are um, the Nuzleaf has explosion, the Graveler has self destruct, and this fight's just weird because it has explosion AI and um, like fake out AI, so it's just it just changes a lot depending on your stats. So it's like. Like, uh, what was it? It was, yeah, if you survive both, it's the fastest fight. If you're dead to self-destruct but not explosion, which sounds weird, but it's it, the self-destruct does more damage. If Espeon's dead to self-destruct but not explosion, uh, it's really bad because the Graveler will double protect, and if it hits it, you lose like 25-ish, 20, 25 seconds. And then the third case, which is Espeon's dead to both, means that uh, you lose probably like 5 to 10 seconds-ish. Um, but it's like a safe fight. Um, and normally I would have had the second case where I get the double protect, but um, if Typhlosion's defense stat is like really bad compared to Espeon's, uh, I don't even know what the move is. It's like, 
I think it's Graveler Rock Throw on Typhlosion compared to Graveler Focus Punch on Espeon or something. It's like really weird. Like this fight's just so weird. Nice. If the Rock Throw does more to Typhlosion, it'll target Typhlosion, and then that forces an equivalent of the first case, which is the fastest case. So, like... I shouldn't have had the fastest fight possible, but because Typhlosion's defense was really bad, I did. It's really weird. But yeah, I remember uh, the fight after this. There's, what, I think there's six possibilities for the lead, and one of them loses 20-ish seconds. And I got that in the old record, which is why I lost like 25 seconds of my gold. I, like, yeah. I just lost a bunch of time because dumb luck here. And I was really mad because it cost me a 326. But I got a good combo this time. There's like weird stuff like that in this game because what? This you lose like 20 seconds if you get a bad one in six. There's Dakeem 2, which is if you get a bad one in six lead, uh, you are a 3 and 16 to live the fight. <laughs> it's like really stupid. It's just the leads in this game are frustrating. Uh, the Venus 2 fight, there's a 1 and 6 lead that if you get it, you have to hit a 3 and 4 to win the fight. It's really, no. Uh, the leads in this game are so annoying. Oh, that kind of actually leads perfectly into probably like the main, like the final talking point at least, with annoying leads. Scizor Sloking, what's in your mind seeing this? Because this is an awful lead. I was, I was, I was like legitimately just like in shambles. I, I saw this and I was just like, there's no way he just killed my friend with this. Cause I believe this is the worst lead. At least it's, I think it's the slowest. Um, the thing about this fight is that the first few turns, uh, you could just use X attacks randomly. I don't know the chances of that. It might be a coin flip. I don't actually know. Um, but that turned the slowest possible combo into a tie for the fastest basically um like if he didn't use those x items what would have happened was they double target makuhita and if they double target maku while caesar's on the field well, well the issue is that espion can't one hit ko anything basically so normally they both target maku and we can't send in typhlosion immediately because caesar's on the field and so basically, like, I'd only be able to kill one of them, and I'd need to, like, set up more. It, or, that's not a good explanation, but, like, I need to set up more, basically. So if, he didn't, if I didn't get that X attack, I would have had to sacrifice uh, Plusle and then send in... Well, I would have had to sacrifice Shadow Meditite and then send in Plusle, and then Plusle would have died And as I set up on turn two. And I, what would have happened is I would have had three of my pokes sent in and killed before I got Typhlosion on the field. And having three of your Pokemon just killed is like so ridiculously slow. I think it would have cost me like 45-ish seconds, like potentially close to a minute, just because how slow that is. And uh, as you saw here, I was able to just send out Typhlosion immediately. Uh, and uh, just got the unequivalent to the fastest fight. Um, it's just there's just a weird balance with this fight of like whether or not you can send Typhlosion onto the field early or not, and it's like if you can send it out early, it's faster, but then you get like a weird ending. So like this ending here, uh, like Typhlosion protects here because the Slack can just use Earthquake. Like both those two pokes, um, it doesn't really matter which one you kill; they both use Earthquake. Um. And it's it's annoying because like I remember thinking at this point like SBR can get crit and I could just lose the run. But uh Earthquake like almost KOs Tyranitar. It I think it can, just barely, depending on its stats. It usually doesn't do as much as it did, I don't think. But like yeah, it almost kills SV. That's like <laughs> really scary ending there. But yeah, it ended up being really fast and I saved like thirty ish seconds over the old record. Yeah, I mean, like, had a bad, bad ending. Like, that X attack uh, on the first turn basically was the difference between a 325 and a 326. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, close. It would have been close. Um, 
I think I had that in like maybe it was my first record I got, my first 327 maybe. I had another run where something similar happened. I think it was that where uh I like got a bad combo and then an X attack turned into a good combo basically. And then I for some reason I used Earthquake there. I should have used Flame Wheel. I felt dumb about that. I just like muscle memory into Earthquake even though I should have used Flame Wheel. Yeah, I mean, would have saved me like three seconds. I mean, like, you, you, I mean, yeah, obviously, like in hindsight, you, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in your head. You've just had one of the best possible fights you could have instead of it being one of the worst fights it could have possibly been. Like, yeah. three seconds. It's not as yeah, it was whatever. It was yeah. like, I just needed to pick an attacking move that was not Fire Blast. I right, imagine if you did pick Fire Blast. I'm not going to imagine that. <laughs> so, yeah, fair. But, I guess, um, I know we were talking about this bit before, but uh, now that you got this time in Coliseum, what are you uh, looking into? Uh, I'll look on to do it. I'll look to move on to. Yeah, uh, I'm not really interested in continuing any percent for this game. Uh, funny enough, I'm not interested in really continuing anything for XD either, but one of my buddies reached out to me and we're uh, sort of in the early stages of researching a new experience route for the XD any percent run. It's just uh, like in this game, how we can just lose fights and continue playing the game. There's uh, a lot of that in XD, and so we're just looking into certain one, certain fights we can lose and like still be able to have an experience route intact where we can still KO things and it's just like a weird trade off right now we're like very early stages of just testing and timing stuff and uh doesn't necessarily look great but there's definitely something possible there and uh, uh like we'll have more stuff public when we're close to finalizing anything but sort of just very early in the works the game's key Dragging you back in. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I don't even... I think the current XD routes, get, we lose like three fights. We're just looking into three more right now. Yeah. Thank you, once again, just for going through that. Going back on this month to go over a... Do you think this run will get... Anytime soon. I don't more in terms of like I don't know if other people are going for this at the moment. I know nobody's like actively well, really going for a top call of time. Um I said this in the commentary, I think, where like uh it can it can be beaten with the current route. Um I remember like when I was working on stuff, I my interpretation was sort of three twenty five would be like a really, really good top end time with uh potential of like a high 24 would be like the absolute best in sort of a real time run so like i'm done with this uh there's a couple of people who could like potentially come close i think i said i don't think anyone is going to beat it with the current route i think that's pretty fair to say yeah fair enough i mean for who knows uh with um with calcium being that uh game some quick uh, there might be some more people yeah. coming in terms of like maybe push for push new routes or new ideas in. You never There's know. There's definitely with, uh, something to like that. that. Kahlo, I th well, I mean, most, I think a lot of Pokemon speedruns have the same problem. But like, I think Kahlo specifically is like notorious for like ignoring good ideas for a really long time. Like, uh, for the longest time, we used Croconaw. And like, when people first, so for the Mount Battle segment, like, there was a long time ago, probably six ish years ago, people were like, Oh my god, we save so much time on Mount Battle if we get Torrent on for Alligator. And we just sort of like ignored the fact that, wait a minute, we can KO stuff if we get Blaze on Typhlosion. So like, Typhlosion would have been faster for like years and years and we just sort of completely ignored it. Didn't even consider it as a possibility. Uh, that's actually hilarious for the Taunt idea. <laughs> oh no, that was stupid. There's, there's a lot of stuff like that. Like, 
we knew we could skip fights in Call of, and like nobody cared until well we actually knew about it we had some early timings and then it just sort of fizzled out really quickly and then Ixarian was like i'm just gonna make a route and do this and then he, he came up with basically the preliminary version of the route i ended up using it's like we it was something we knew about for multiple years before it was actually implemented just one of those things where like having a small community probably hurt us like that like the more people we have just sort of throwing ideas around like the better maybe in that case in five years time someone might pick up an idea from what would be one year from now and then maybe get out <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there's a new time uh, it would match the timeline perfectly <laughs> But yeah, thank you, Zeke. And I guess we'll throw it back to someone. Welcome back. I don't know why I'm saying it. Is welcome back actually the normal thing? I'm just in my own mind at the moment, but uh, we are we are back uh, after the break. Um, stuff that's happened this past month. Etiquette. Do you want to go about that? Because there is one thing that has happened. Wait, what is the one thing? Is it the... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon Stadium is being released on the Switch Virtual Console. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So, they now have leaderboards on this as well. Um, we do actually... We'll go into that more a bit later because... There is a, there is a run from that. But, as a general thing, just so you're all aware... It's much quicker than the Nintendo 60, uh, 64 version. Who would have thought? Actually, I mean, I've said that to be fair. I think Snap, which also has a Switch Virtual Console release. That actually might be slower. I don't remember. Yeah, generally... Like generally, like, N64 games are, you know... They all have lag to some extent. So, like, VC versions are going to be usually a little bit faster um but yeah but i at least at this point I, there's already like a switch record that is faster than the n64 one um, right not faster than the emulator yet though but if you are wanting to run stadium but don't want to run on the emulator or shell out for the n64 and setting all that up because that does get expensive. Uh, Switch Virtual Console is an option for you now. But yeah, we can go into the noted runs. So, Ian, let you lead off. Yeah, we have uh, three runs from Gen Gens 1 through 3. First up is UG's uh, third place in red any percent glitch list. Uh, very good time, 145.13. We all know what the record is, but um, this is a, still a very, very solid time. Um, Yuji's been running this for quite some time. Um, bit of a bit of a t bit of time off um, to kind of, I guess, take a break, um, and uh, came back with a pretty solid run. Uh, I don't know how many runs they did prior to coming back, but uh, still a really good run. Uh, a little bit rusty, but. Uh, and the Elite Four apparently was not great either. Yeah, but I think, uh, the thing that I saw was that they had to do like a, well, at least like a part of it at least. There was a different menu that they had to do because there was some. I think the thing says it was like three blizzards on Geo or something, which I tried looking through, couldn't find anything where they used Blizzard three times. But actually, wait, it'll be in the description here. Uh, different menus on E4 in, uh, because of three blizz on Geo was bad. If anyone who runs red knows that, what does that mean? Oh, it, sorry, I missed what you said. It, it, um, so had to do different menus in the Elite Four because of a three blizz on Geo was bad. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know, like, the Geo Gym battle, you have to hit a Blizzard on Rhydon. It's not a dangerous one to miss, um, in terms of, like, yeah, the Rhydon a, doesn't kill you, but... It is a range, isn't it, as well? It could be a range, too, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe his Blizz PP was low. 
calm. I'm out of touch with red uh, routes now. That's sad. It's fair games. <laughs> <laughs> like yellow. Yellow is fun. I may have annoyed several people there. But sorry, Ian. Uh, I guess we'll maybe we'll go into the next run at this point if we've got nothing we can particularly think about. No, nothing much more no, that I can think about now. But uh, yeah, it's a good solid time for sure. Uh, still with red here, we have uh, Groger's uh, red glitchless classic third place run. Uh, got a nice 11 second PB with a 157.48. Uh, so again, if anyone's not familiar, this is a run that uses no manips. Uh, and you have to uh, go to the hideout, so you can't use the poke at all. And you can't get instant text as well. There might be another thing I'm missing, but... Uh, pretty much is um, considered a more advanced version. Um, well, it's hard to say, because the manips can be challenging. Um, but with manip with classic, you have to do a little bit more. Uh, you have to know a, little, a lot more how to deal with certain situations if you have specific stats. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the Miniran stats here aren't fantastic. The speed looks pretty good, but everything else, uh, especially the attack, is kind of low. This is probably as low attack as you'd run, I imagine, for uh, for this route. If I someone could correct me if if uh, I'm wrong, but I don't think the lowest DVs are runnable. Uh, for uh, for classic for sure. I did play this years ago, but it's changed quite a bit since. Um, generally pretty solid time. Uh, played a bit safely uh, in certain spots, but uh, overall very happy with the result. the The record is about a minute away, I believe. So um, it's good to see this category getting a lot of uh, got a lot of play as well. Yeah, though, because that record is one of uh, it. Is it? I always forget if it's either this one or the yellow one that's longer, like the longest standing one. I want to say it's the red one. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, so, if it, if I was to get toppled, that'd be quite big. Just given the context. Of the yeah, it's one, it's one of Exarian's last few records that he still has. So. But yeah, solid, solid run there. Uh, next, we're going to actually don't see this very often, but we have a Gen 2 record to talk about uh, this time. I don't know too much about this one because it's uh, it's a, a Japanese record. Um, but Rin-Chan got the Japanese uh, glitch list record in 309.02. Uh, as far as I know, it's the same route um, as the English version. So you run uh, the total line the whole way. Uh, and... It looks like uh, this does not have a manip toto dial either. Uh, I don't know if they ha do manips in Japanese. But uh, this is definitely uh, not a, a perfect toto dial by any stretch, so I would assume that this one was uh, not manipped. Oh, I got an ad. Fantastic. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know too much about this time, but the uh, the run generally tends to play faster as most Japanese uh, categories do. Um, this one probably includes the credits as well, so that's that's a pretty solid time yeah, overall. Not, but uh, don't be wrong. At least for these to just be around that like ten second ahead mark. I can, okay, pulls away a bit there. Let's see. Oh, wait, wait, there must be some big time save somewhere. What's the end of the run? Just looking at like assuming that's previous PB. Oh, All right, okay. Something happens. I don't even. Is that that is Sabrina, right? Yeah, that's Sabrina. Ones. That could be. There's a spinner, um. In Sabrina's gym, so like old PB could have hit the spinner, and the new one didn't. Could be something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think. I couldn't find too much about this to, to help out Iron, so that is my apologies on that. Oh, that's well. fine. Um, it's good to see Gen 2 get some uh, 
get some representation here. Don't yeah, see it very often. Definitely been a while since we talked about Gen 2 and like the noted runs bit, I'm pretty sure. They like, don't I like, I mean like kind of keep alluding to it. It doesn't sound like too many oh it doesn't seem like too many people just run Gen 2. Every like there'll be like maybe like little peaks every now and then, but like the, the quiet uh, very quiet at times. Yep. Um, who wants to? Yeah, we have nothing from. We, we, well, yeah, we have nothing from Gen Three, uh, other than, of course, what we talked about, uh, which is, I guess, yeah. was the focus of, of the podcast. So. Yeah. So. Uh, normally, Tucker would take the DS ones, but uh, took out to uh, leave a bit early. So. Does anyone want to? Otherwise, I can just go through the DS ones. I'll do the the Diamond Pearl any percent one, sure. All right. I'm here. You are here, indeed. I am here. They let me on, finally. What year is this now? <laughs> <laughs> year is it? Uh, this is Rubentis' third place, any percent in Diamond and Pearl. Uh, 57.09 is a very good time. I believe record scores 56.5x, so he's getting very close. Um, this run did Mart Skip, which is it's like a completely different manip, basically, so that you don't go to the market and buy... Uh, potions and status items, which almost worked until he got paralyzed by Gardenia, um, which then is kind of a, a nightmare scenario. Um, he opted to take the market and get a paralyzed heal anyway. Uh, this is the tweaks at the end of the run, which I'm sure were executed perfectly. But yeah, um, third place. This is a very optimized category. Like, you obviously only what 18 seconds away from record here and you're not even second place so yeah this is a very fine time well done to Rebentus. Well done to Rebentus. the mart skip route is gross <laughs> i hate that that exists i'm sure i'll do i don't know anything about plat any percent other than they get multiple water type pokemon but hey here we are um yeah, well, so this actually, is. I'm gonna point out the first thing is to say solo Golduck route. So I don't even think. Oh, there's only Golduck. one Golduck. Oh, interesting. We're from two Tentacruels to one Golduck. Yeah. Yes. I know. Um, I remember Worcester talking about the Golduck thing for a while. Uh, I remember watching Pulse try and sort it out at one point, like ages ago. But that's that is my limit of knowledge. The only thing I will say, the reason why I highlighted this bit is because it's a few failures, uh, failures here in the tweaking. Wow, mean. Oh god, you have to do it around that running trainer as well, that's gross. Yeah, yeah I didn't see, I mean, you gotta do it where you gotta do it, but it does not seem like an ideal spot. Also, I, I, I don't know, why, why does the game look like this? Oh wow. <laughs> you tweak that. <laughs> Uh, it's it's something to do with loading visual. I think it's with like it loads the visual tiles from one chunk, but the collision tiles from another. So he's not actually in anything that looks like this right now. Yeah, that could be. Part, yeah. Visually, this part of the route is actually like you already passed that part. So yeah, uh, tweaking is really interesting. It's the Gen Four glitch runs are, are really cool. I'm always a fan of watching this. The jogger can even see you underground if you're not careful. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. I guess. It doesn't know, like, just like, because of the pearl and platinum. The difference between them is massive. In terms of, like, the times. Like, so you're just able to skip much more with pearl, I guess. Just cycling through a person there. Yeah, I don't know if... So, Pearl, the, the big thing is, you, as soon as you got the bite, you can just tweak your way to the end. Um, I don't yeah. really know why that doesn't work in Platinum. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, there could maybe be some check at Elite Four, I don't know, but... Oh, Rebenta says that in Platinum they nerfed the Void. Ah. Which is, you do spend a lot of time in <laughs> in uh, DP any percent just running through Black. Uh, you get stuck if you try to go very. That makes sense, yeah. I think you end up running a long distance towards the Elite Four in DP. 
So it'd be one of those things where if you could get to the Elite Four early, you would be able to skip the badge checks, but they just don't let you get there, I guess. Interesting. Mm. It is also this thing, like, like all the Sinnoh games, at least at some point. Uh, I, mean, I can't say all the Sinnoh games because technically Legends Arceus is a Sinnoh game, but... Nah, okay, for my example, it's uh. a Hizui game now. It's a Hizui game now. So yeah, all the Sinnoh games, you can go into the void, depending on the patch version. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elicate. Because there's no, uh, there is no 3DS runs, is there? Uh, yeah, um, no 3DS runs this month, um, and just a couple here on the Switch. Um, so the first one here is this is Caro's um, new 1.2.0 and above Japanese record for uh, Pokemon Sword. Um, this is. Uh, so the Japanese runners all, almost all, um, exclusively run the Candy Floss route. Um, so this is new record with that. Um, it says here it might have been their first run finishing it with the um, the timing of the date changeover. Um, basically, the this section of the run you have to catch two pokemon you have to catch vulpix in the overworld and then you have to catch minchino um as a random grass encounter and um those two don't spawn on the same day and so what you want to do is you want to get to the grass with enough time that you can find a vulpix to catch while it's still like um you know harsh sunlight and then have the, the day change over quick enough that you can then run into a random encounter and get the minchino um, and so you saw here, basically, that went perfectly. It was like Bullpick's first random encounter was the Minchino, which I think is like a 40% anyways, so you're not even guaranteed to get it. Um, and then, yeah, basically just carried this uh, sort of momentum from the time, like timing everything uh, through the run. Um, normally, what you would do is you'd either have to wait a certain amount of time if you like mistime it, um, or manually change the date over, so. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I briefly looked at the, the chat. It seemed like the stats on Vulpix were pretty good. Uh, the Vulpix is level 10, which is the best level you can get. Um, and yeah, it's just a really solid run overall. Yeah, I, I guess the one thing I will say, I don't even think it's really exclusive to Japanese runners at this point now. I think it's everyone but one stubborn fool that <laughs> runs uh, Candy Floss. Wonder who that one stubborn fool is. I wonder who as well. Um, Aiden, you are probably better to talk, to talk about this than anyone. Yeah, so this is the second run we're talking about today that uses a water duck as the main. Uh, we talked. We've talked about this before. Um, um, this is Starfall Street in in Scarlet. Um, really, nothing really much to say. Just a little bit of a much more optimized run compared to last time. Uh, pretty much use the water starter. Um, you re have to reset for decent stats, but then you can use the same main uh, for all your attempts, provided you don't never save. Uh, and then you just uh, make your way through um, the bases. Um, well, Crisis has also ran this, and Crisis has also gotten very good times with this route as well. And might, he might have a better time than this, actually. just hasn't submitted. So this is probably the fastest main now for Starfall Street, uh, confirmed. Um, and yeah, just it's a pretty solid route. It is quite risky. There are some fights that can go horribly wrong. Um, ideally, you would not run a physical Pokemon for this category, because there's a lot of Pokemon that do things like Baby Doll Eyes. Um, you have issues with... Uh, not so much for duck, but you can have issues with foul play on the on the previous fight. If you set up X attacks, you end up doing a lot of damage, or it ends up doing a lot of damage to you. Uh, and then there's just other various cases with baby doll eyes, especially on Ortega, which could be problematic as well. Um, this fight's quite scary because you set up a guard spec, and ideally you just get baby doll eyes turn one, which I believe I got, and then you have to set up two more X items, two X attacks specifically, to get... To, um, plus four 
And once in this game, it'll it, once you use once you seize the guards back is up, it won't go for uh, the utilize anymore. So you ideally see it first try or first turn, and then go from there. The problem is the guard spec fades away, and then um, you might get randomly baby utilized uh, later on in the fight, which I did get. I think Vaporeon ended up doing it here, so um, it's a bit unfortunate, but I had to uh, do a bit of a safety strat towards the end of this fight. It lost me a little bit of time overall, but it wasn't too bad. Um, just a yeah, there question it is right there. <laughs> yeah. A question for me, but because you're you're like more of an early generation runner. Mm -hmm. Um, Scar like with Scarlet and Violet allowing you to like save a starter and like keep that. What's your opinions on that? Like, oh, with the so they can always run with the same stats. Yeah. Um. I'll be honest, I don't really have a strong opinion on it because I don't know how the rest of the run plays. I'd kind of need to know a bit more about the run and I don't really know anything about Scarlet Violet. Um, but I got to, I think this was implemented pretty quickly, wasn't it, after... Yeah, like, it was. Early in, yeah, I feel like if it was a bad choice, you'd have enough people shouting about it. So I, I'm going to generally trust in the community of runners behind Scarlet Violet that the choice made sense. But yeah, I don't, I uh, I really don't know enough about the run to admit to make an informed opinion on it, I won't lie. Yeah. And it's just the single stories as well, not the, uh, yeah. not the any percent. Yeah. As well. So. Yeah. Well, the single uh, stories it... are a bit more execution based as well, aren't they? So it, that seems pretty fine to me. Yeah, they're much shorter, <laughs> so obviously, yeah. yeah. A lot more, I can optimize them a lot easier. Yeah. Anna's just made a great point about asking the, the fire red leaf green tournament guy whether running with the same stats all the time is bad or not. <laughs> nope, totally fine. <laughs> yeah, the Japanese the Japanese community does not do this. They uh, they do all these single stories from the beginning, which you could not do this route. Well, you could, but the resets would be horrible because you would play about five minutes. <laughs> Check your duck stats and it's probably like Single, it's single digit percent to get a runnable one. I and remember so being, you'd reset it. I'd be being very glad that Sun Moon had moved the reset points up so you could save in the house because even 12 minute resets feel like a lot. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's it's so funny how, like, you know, two of the three uh single story runs have like really strict starter requirements, and then you look at any percent, and any percent's like. You just take any starter. It doesn't matter because the first fifty minutes, like nothing matters basically, because um, you you don't even get your main until till much later, and the stats yeah. only barely matter for those first like four fights. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat how diff we have a bunch of different categories with Flamigo has. Two out of the four, I guess, out of the main. And mm. so there's a little bit of diversity there, which is really nice to see. It yeah, and then I was just going to say, even uh, like we don't use the starter for all that much, but it actually is pretty interesting to me that we've got three single story runs and the current best route for each one uses a different starter. Like the grass starter yep. is used in Path of Legends. The water starter is used here in Starfall. And then the fire starter is actually used for a little bit of the victory road run. So it's like all three of yeah. them get some sort of, which is both interesting and cool. But also if you want to have a save file set up for each one, you have to waste three of your profiles on your switch. <laughs> That's so true. It's a shame that the fire starter isn't used, able to be used as a main. It's just yeah. very slow. What is the base speed for? Uh, I want to say it's in like Skeletor's is like 60 or something. Yeah. It's horrible. Uh, uh, and it's got a really cool like signature move. It's 66 speed. Um, it's got a really cool signature move that in any other Pokemon game would be pretty decent, but because of animations, um, it's really bad. Just because it's a move, it's a Torch Song. It's 80 power fire special. And it raises your special attack every time you use it. 
Um, so you could like snowball on a fight really easily, especially with like, you know, the way that uh, in the gyms, you know, you've got your Terra Pokemon coming out last, which is usually going to be bulkier and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can kind of snowball your special attack that way. But you have to sit through the attacks or the special attack stage animation rising every single time, uh, which just is so slow. Hey, may as well just buy, might as well just roll into the next one since it's also still Scarlet and Violet and that's good. Um, I yeah, I so <laughs> that is me. Um, yeah, so this is um, Victory Road, um, second place when it was set. Uh, this is, I think it's about 16, no, it's like 15 or so seconds away from uh, Saiyan's time. Um, Nothing too special about this run. Uh, it was more or less just a solid run with the current route. Um, you'll see that my time, uh, you know, 18 seconds behind at Larry to over a minute behind at Tulip. Uh, that's kind of fake time loss. You basically have to catch a doubles partner for uh, Rhymes Gym. And uh, you either catch it on the Tulip split or you catch it on the Brucia split. Uh, I... I no, or the rhyme split, sorry. Um, so I end up basically losing 45 seconds and then saving all that time back. Um, but yeah, the, the run overall was really solid. Um, I ended up saving a bunch of time to my PB in Elite Four um, because I tried to be clever during the Elite Four um, on my old PB and it didn't matter. Um, basically, there's... Uh, there was a note in the notes about the lead on Poppy, uh, which is a Copperaja, where it can use Play Rough, and if you get Play Rough uh, attack drop, then you basically lose the run because you you would take over half health, and then you uh, you know don't have the attack to finish out the fight. Um, so what I was thinking was I was like, all right, I can just set up on the Star Raptor instead. Um, which will Brave Bird me, but that's fine. Uh, and then it ended up doing something else. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but it did something really, you know, trolly. So it ended up wasting me a bunch of time. Um, come to find out, uh, I think it was Dynam pointed out in the Discord that the Cop Raja has Sheer Force, which means that Play Rough Drop isn't a thing, uh, because Sheer Force removes the secondary effects of moves. So, uh, we're all basically afraid for nothing. Um, but yeah, so I ended up saving a bunch of time back here on Poppy. I think I was over 50 seconds ahead. Um, 214 pace, definitely ahead of Saiyan's run. And then I got the 30% poison point on Hassle, which wastes about 30 seconds. Um, and then finished out at the 215.21. Um, so I, this is the category. We're going to talk about it soon-ish um, that I'll be doing at SGDQ. So I'm still kind of doing runs um i'm mostly you know focused on just completing runs rather than going for pbs and stuff uh so i don't know if i'll beat this before uh the event but uh it's always possible um there's not a whole lot of danger in this category um this category is a lot of uh until the elite four this category is a lot of you know just please don't waste me time uh like no sandstorm on Kofu, no rain on Katie, stuff like that. Um, and then you get to the Elite Four and every fight is like, well, if you get crit, you're dead. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I think the the run I did before this one, and the reason why my notes have, or my uh, splits have a couple of notes there on the Grusha, Rhyme, and Rika splits, I completely forgot to use my bottle caps. Um, and so I was actually ahead of this run going into the Elite Four. Um, but I forgot to use my bottle caps, and so I took it as far as I could, but I ended up dying on Hassle because I got outsped. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool category. This is my favorite of the, the single story categories. It's a lot more like your traditional Pokemon run where you're just going doing the gyms, doing the Elite Four um, without the side stuff. So 
Not to say the other runs aren't good, but this one, I, I really like this one. That's that's interesting you say that, because I've ran this too. I, I honestly find it a little boring, because the gym, the gym tests are mostly very monotonous. Mm. And the movement is also obviously fun as well. Um, anytime you have to dodge wild Pokemon that might be showing up, makes always makes things interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I just, I just, I just never found this one that fun. But to each their own, for sure. Yeah, it's for for me. Like a lot of people are drawn toward Path of Legends, and the problem I have with Path of Legends is it's like an hour long, and there are six fights basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's true. And so, like this one, you know, this one definitely has a bit of that as well. Uh, like the the section, the tulip split is twenty five minutes. It's not because tulips gym takes that long tulips gym probably takes about 10 minutes but there's just so much movement there um so definitely some of the gyms do take a while um but yeah th this this category also has some some really satisfying movement as well um like if you go yeah. to uh, all the all the river it? skips and stuff yeah yeah um maybe like the 20 minute mark it's before I make it to Iono's town. There is, I think I messed it up and I ended up saving it. Um, it is right before this. Okay, so I'm gonna fly from here. Um, and then there's this river skip, which doesn't look that difficult. Um, but the geometry for the slope that you land on, if you land a little bit too low, you end up sliding instead of being able to run. Um, and so I think this is the run where I actually messed it up, but it was able to save it. Um, so the first river jump here is pretty straightforward, uh, but it's the second one that's more difficult. I do know you like before streams, you've been doing this like this single jump a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to basically hit like a certain spot on this and I end up sliding, turning around and then doing the backward jumps oh, nice. to get up the slope. Um, otherwise, you land in the water and you just get reset back on the on the land. Um, so there's that jump there, and then there's another jump in the town with the auction house where you have to get on top of the roof, uh, which is another really really tricky jump. Oh, that one! That one's awful. That yeah, the one that like... we just showed you. There's the yeah. Sorry, before you go to that one, the one that we just showed you here. There's an easier version as well. Um, yes, which you can still miss. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, but the Porto one is, is pretty bad. That one is going to be like uh, 47 minutes. Uh, maybe a bit. All right. It's going to be like a minute after this. It's close enough. Um, yeah, so there's an EXP candy large. Um, this category, like every other category in Scarlet Violet, is a big candy hunt, beef up whatever Pokemon you're using. Um, and then uh, sweep the game. So uh, this EXP candy is actually to use on the Foycoco. Um, but yeah, you basically have to jump from this house onto the house across the way. Um, which the only way you can do that is if you're boosting when you jump, but you can't start your boost on the backside of the house because when you hit the perch, like on the top of the roof, you lose your momentum. So you have to like start running on one side, start sprinting once you hit the top and then jump all in like one swift movement. It's not too bad once you practice it a bunch, like uh, enough. Um, but it's definitely one of those things that when you see somebody doing, you go, oh, that's easy. And then you try it yourself and like, I have no idea what's going wrong. Um, it's really it's really all about the timing. Uh, and this is another one. There is an easier jump. Uh, you can actually go up to the lighthouse yeah. on the right um, and do like a longer jump over to the houses over there. Um, it's just a bit more out of the way. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, uh, in that case, go on to the, the side games. And there is a fair amount of them. So the like, first one, we mentioned that Stadium has come out on Switch Virtual Console. 
and this is the current which world record from whom uh, in gym, uh, gym leader castle round one it's a 131.57 which if this was on console who estimates this would be around the high 37 oh high 137 very low 138 so looking at like six six ish minute difference between the the two versions but I mean ultimately like uh stadium is hit hit thunder or hit insert inaccurate move here my understanding uh have any of you actually run stadium So fat now. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have not run it either. Um, I've actually only <laughs> played the game one. Thing. But, uh, I know you've got to hit a lot of thunders with that Zapdos. I yeah, think. basically, yeah. That that is my only understanding of it as well. Hit thunder. Hit thunder with Zapdos. Uh, and who managed to do that the best so far? So that's the um, a game that I don't think we've ever shown on the podcast, like since season two at least. Is this TCG two? Yeah, TCG two. Wow. Uh, zero 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 AJ's, um, and you've seen glitchless no manips English world record, a one fifty one twenty, which is the first submitted run in the category for over two years. So it might have actually been one that might be in one of the first podcast episodes, maybe. Maybe, um, but there's also uses uh, as that uh, from a minip, which is apparently quite finicky uh, to do, and like that's this split now. Um, I think it's also worth noticing, uh, mentioning that uh, this is done on emulator. It has to be done on emulator, I believe, because the game is not in English. It's a Japanese-only game, but there's an English patch, which, oh, like an English fan translation, as you can see in the top. Just about. Um, so, yeah, I can't really speak too much to the manip itself, other than the fact that it's apparently finicky. But uh, cool. Again, you don't see this. Well, you definitely don't see this game often at all. So it's just nice to, when you see those runes every now and then pop up. Um, Amiibo, you are like perfect to talk about this run. Oh, this, this game. I like pinball. Yeah, this is a Japanese runner called, is it Anago? Yeah. Anago, uh, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they've had they've had a lot of PB. In fact, I'm a little bit sad that I haven't seen any PB since this one because they've been rapidly moving up the leaderboards on Sapphire Field. Um, this is the best category in the game, really. Short, sweet, there's no terrible RNG. Um, what about Catch Do yeah. No. <laughs> wrong um yeah this is i mean this is a very solid run my pb is pretty good so i but i am kind of expecting them to bop it soon um it'd be the first first main category record that hasn't been held by me in a long while i think oh no catch sorry catch them all is uh his main category now but yeah i mean of the of like the defeat rayquaza categories I think it's been me for a, a long time now, so it'd be quite nice to have some competition towards the top for this one, especially this category. Sapphire feels so good. But yeah, I think uh, they had a PB very, very shortly before this one um, that was record pace going into Rayquaza, and then they got one of the worst Rayquaza fights I've ever seen, which was a real shame. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to see what they do, because this is what 13 seconds off record it's pretty close uh i think it is yeah 13 seconds Something like that. um if your room got beaten would you come back to this yep yes i'd get pinball content hell yeah <laughs> i uh I've got the perfect streak on this game, finally. <laughs> it only happened again towards the end of last year when I finally got catch them all back. But yeah, I intend to keep it. That's just... Um, I don't know, actually, if they're running Japanese. I don't know if they... They are, because the catch em mode says get start. 
okay. rather than catch. That's the only way you can tell. Fair enough. <laughs> Everything um, else matches. I, okay, I guess that first answer to the question. Is a language version, that is nope. a language version different to time ways? No, but okay. <laughs> Absolutely nothing that we can tell. Um, it might be, I mean, it, it, there's a possibility that something could be faster. There's a possibility that emulator is faster as well, but we just allow it as is because there's so few load screens in this game that it's just nicer to have the competition all on the same page. Yeah. So few people actually own a real copy of this game that... Yeah, it just makes more sense. That disappoints me. In ball. Even though I am terrible at it, it's a great game. It is a great game. And we have to move on from it, sadly. Uh, on to Redskins XD, any percent second place. Uh, a 42429, which is a 5 second PB compared to the, the previous PB. Which I think like, the most noteworthy thing about this run is the speed on the Teddy Earth. So 28 uh, IV Jolly. It's like a really good nature as well, to be fair, but like I say, you don't need a special attack, of course. Um, and my, the thing that was like, Reds can mention is that if, because there is. A potential for a manip, uh, like a Teddy Ursa manip happening. Um, you'd expect a lot of those, like the manip Teddy Ursas, to be like this, to be a really fast one as opposed to like a really heavy hitter. Um, just because they're apparently a lot more convenient in certain fights, I think, is my understanding. Just having that speed. And I think like the attack is got a good enough attack as a base that it's fine. Um, but yeah, not anything too much else to say about that run. Uh, Amoeba. Hmm. I feel like you should say the title for this game. Or the, the category for this game. <laughs> PMD Blue Rescue Team, any percent, no QS, no WM, JPM, Wii U, WR. Thank you. A uh, 21047. Um, only had to do up your forest one time or uh only gone got an ape on with it once it's uh th this is a forest where you gotta get you know chestnuts for the mine keys yeah That's you need two need. chestnuts total i yeah. remember this sort of the, this is like the one mystery dungeon game i've ever run and uh yeah if you get double chestnut that was a huge time save you just skip having to come back to this place again later yeah uh. um do you normally get ape on as a friend I don't know what the APOM's about there, no. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm The knowledge I have is going back m many, many years. So I don't know what he's up to. Oh, is it like pickup? What the? I don't know what he just did. <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Um, other things about this run. Apparently went 0-1-0 zero, zero with monster houses. And then they got the warp scarf, which uh, is Magma Cavern. Is Magma Cavern after this or before this? I think after. It's the... I think it's where Groudon is. Yeah. Um, I, anyway, I, I just the... have no context for the, like, the order for the game anymore. <laughs> it's been a while since I've played it. I think Warp Scarf is the, the scarf that will randomly warp you. Um, yeah. I don't know if it randomly warps you just to a random place or if it just occasionally warps you to the stairs, but either which way, that's pretty good. Because even if you get randomly warped, you can typically write off uh, two rooms from having the stairs, and that's still good. Uh, to carry on with the uh, the PMD train, um, this is Cabral's Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, any percent, no wonder male, English, DS slash 3DS, world record, a 5 1936. Um, shout out to the, uh, to the, I don't want to say potato, I can't place potato. Cam in my head. I can't think of <laughs> potato cam's valid. We like potato cam. Yeah, that hand's great. I just my brain was just thinking it's a hand like it was thinking hand cam. Uh, to say, but like that sounded even like weirder to say, I guess. But anyway, um, this was a good start with a one fifty six round on, um, but was apparently worried to not keep the momentum due to a very rough mid game. And only having one rev. I don't know what rev is. 
after Crystal Crossing. Um, but they didn't get unlucky with the dungeon in the, the future and late game sections, so it ended up working out alright. Uh, the thing I wanted to note is that there were several world records for uh, Mystery Dungeon No Win the Mail. Uh, like for the any percent in this game. I've just chosen to pick the one because a lot of them are very similar. So, but I do want to specifically mention that Eponymous got one with the emulator version and I think emulator with Japanese and then both Cabral and uh, Eponymous got like, the no dark right uh, world records for two, of, two out of three of them um, which is just the longer version of this category like you do any percent as you would normally do it and then you just do like the post game uh, I just wanted to mention them but also I didn't want to make the podcast a million years long um, there is one more Mystery Dungeon game that I'm still to talk about, which is uh, Shady Gamer's Super Mystery Dungeon 8% Windmill English New 3DS slash NTR World Record, a 5 12 13. Uh, it was a great run with early attack looplet and lots of ones for the late game. Um, so many, in fact, that it was apparently able to use Guiding Wand for Mystery Jungle in Mew Percent. This is also the Mew Percent World Record. Um, and also life split crashed at <laughs> Rev2, so the <laughs> call of life split. In fact, I don't think I've ever had, I've never had it crash in a run for me. I've had it be finicky at times, but not have it had it that bad. So I'll give, I'll give credit to life split. Like, like this might be a question for both Amoeba and Etiquette. As you the speedrunning old men, I guess. All right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I've never, I've never quite been so offended by something I 100% agree with. Um, but was there any other time as used other than life split? Oh, oh yeah. split. Land fair. What? If yeah. you were strange. I, I, I did land fair. <laughs> Etiquette was strange. Yep. Uh, yeah, when I started it was W split, which is uh, it's that green timer. It's got like a green background and like light oh. green text. Okay. Um, uh, really, I don't think did W split actually have splits, or was it just a timer? No, I think it had, had splits. splits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because live split would work with W splits split files. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're going back to like 2013, 2014 for that live split that came out sometime in 20. 14 and has pretty much been the de facto program ever since. Okay, just curious now, out of the two of you, which one of you actually started speedrunning first? I believe you did, didn't you, Etika? You were 2013? I was September of 2013. Oh, only just. I was November 2013. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I feel knowing that this is going to be, this is all like you're coming up to 10 years now. <sighs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that is all the noted runs, though. Um, who wants to do the marathons? Um, I can do them. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, not a ton of marathons this uh, compared to other months. Um, but definitely some some good quality ones here. Um, first one is uh, Anime Speedrun Festival 2023 um, on May 14th. So actually tomorrow um, around 6 p.m. Um, UK time. It's going to be Mockwing versus Ananon versus Main uh, doing a Fire Red Leaf Green Any Percent race. So if you completely missed all of the races we just did in the in the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament, um, nice little. Uh, showcase of that should be a really good race. All three of them are great runners. Um, all right. Uh, so a week from tomorrow, on May twenty first, uh, at UKSG twenty twenty three, uh, Crisosaurus is going to be doing Pokemon Scarlet Path of Legends glitched. Um, Crisis is one of the the few people that has held out on updating their copy of Pokemon Scarlet. So uh, if you haven't seen the glitch stuff. Uh, this may be one of the only chances to really see it in a marathon. 
Uh, well, they did the glitched one at ESA, but uh, this will be the Path of Legends, which is arguably the only single story that would benefit from the glitch. Um, so yeah, so that is next Sunday. Um, and then uh, two runs here at SGDQ 2023. Uh, fun little fact, the games list came out about 40 minutes after the podcast ended last month. Yeah. Um, which was kind of funny because we were all like hoping it was going to show up during the podcast and it ended up being like a half hour later. <laughs> um, but yeah, so two Pokemon runs. Uh, first up is going to be Swiftaloo and Sparkle doing a Pokemon Coliseum any percent race. Uh, that's going to be on June 2nd around 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, this is the first time that Coliseum is being showcased at a GDQ and honestly one of the first side games. Uh, we've had like snap and I think last last marathon there was uh, the PMD randomizer, but this is um, definitely helping with the side game representation at GDQs um, should be a great race. And then uh, on the 3rd of June, uh, so final day of the marathon um, will be myself uh, doing the Pokemon Scarlet Victory Road Speed Run. So this is the run that we saw earlier during the notable run section. Um, so that'll be pretty fun. Uh, all of these do have donation incentives for things like uh, nicknames um, and stuff like that. So definitely, if you want to influence the run that way, definitely get in there. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up what we've got for marathons this month. The one thing I will say is that the time for Edica's print has changed the last six hours or something. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, by like... It's by like 23 minutes. It's just how things get probably just as every now and then. That's just a funny thing I thought I'd mention. Marathon scheduling oh, gets wow, hard. Yeah. Actually, you say that, it's uh, it's almost two hours later than the last time I looked at it. It must have been oh. a while ago. <laughs> Not a big deal, though. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be there in person. Yeah. Not like you're going to be... It's not going to be a major difference whether it's two hours later or not, I guess. Actually, to be fair... Uh, mm. I, I was thinking, is, is it a bad time? It's probably a worse time, a tiny bit worse for Europe. But, it's a little bit on the late side, yeah. Yeah. But for for UK... Uh, it'll perfectly fine. Just, yeah, because it'll be finishing just before midnight, I guess, if you're in mainland Europe. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. That's just me thinking off the top of my head. Um, cool things to mention. The Let's Go any percent no, no mount skips. I stop myself from saying no major skips. No mount skips. Um has been announced and the signups are currently open. Um, Erica, do you have a link to the... Um, I can get a link, one second. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a fast turnaround, but we do want to try to get... Um, basically, signups are from... Started last weekend, uh, and they are going until June 4th, actually. So at the end of GDQ. Um, more coincidence that they're lining up like that um and here is a link to the discord uh so you can go ahead and join the discord there uh if you are interested in participating commentating just want to keep track of like when the races are um hell if you want to just like learn the game and do races outside of the tournament um i know that we've already started uh there was a a race yesterday i think we're trying to put together a race for tomorrow just to um just to do that a lot of people have been de-rusting um things like that we honestly already have something like 24 people signed up um which is pretty wild a lot of range of skill levels you've got people who have never done a run uh well you have one person right now who's never done a run her name is poke guy so you can probably expect how they're gonna do um and then you've got people you know all over the um 
all over the place in terms of skill level. So definitely all skill levels are welcome to join. Um, it should be a good time. Um, and then one of the big things, uh, the format's going to be very similar to the other tournaments that you've seen, uh, like specifically the Fire Leaf Green tournament. Uh, but the one thing that we are trying this time around is we're trying to... Um, in general, we're trying to make sure that everybody has at least two races. Um, so depending on the number of signups, uh, that might either look like a double elimination tournament, uh, which I'm personally hoping for because uh, spent a lot of time making those brackets and it just seems like a really cool way to do something like this. Um, but if we end up with too many people, it'll end up being more of like a um, like a round 1.5 where where the, the bottom half essentially plays to get back into the tournament. Um, which will still be really cool, um, I think. Especially for people who may be like learning the game to immediately get eliminated round one can be a little um, discouraging. So gives everyone a, a nice fair shot to you know, put together something good. Um, and yeah, so like I said, the signups are going to be ending on June 4th. Um, the goal is to have round one draws done by June 7th. Uh, that'll also be on this channel. Um, and ha hopefully have the tournament start uh, with the first races around June 10th, which is the Saturday after that. Um, and like the Fire Relief Green tournament, it should all be broadcast here or on the Pokemon Speedruns 2 or Pokemon Speedruns TV 2 Twitch channel. Um, so make sure you're following that. And. Yeah, I think I got everything. Uh, one thing I did notice that I'm surprised nobody has yelled at me for. Uh, we have the, the link to the sign up in important links, but we never actually made an announcement in the announcements channel of the Discord with all the information. So I will probably do that at some point tonight. Um, just so everyone has a place to a place to go. But uh, yeah, Jordan, did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. I've, to be fair, I've not been paying too much attention in terms of like the if there's like other things that should have been mentioned now. I'm more focused yeah. on trying to get the tech. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, also just another just more general note. Um, this is something that we would like to. Obviously, if the whole tournament ends up a disaster, we may not do it again. But um, this is something we are hoping to do more regularly. Um, maybe yearly like the other tournaments maybe you know every other year or something like that um but the the general idea is if there are things that we think uh could be good either this year or for future years um definitely don't hesitate to like you know suggest them and, and reach out uh one of the big things that we know we want to do eventually but we just won't have the time to do this year um is handle any sort of like physical versus digital time comparisons um something for fire leaf green tournament is if you're running on emulator there's like a 25 second penalty um just to even out the two platforms um and so having something like that would be good for let's go but it's also not something that we want to just sort of implement unscientifically if that makes sense um so it is something we know we're missing this year and we're gonna hopefully have for future tournaments um just so it evens the playing field without people having to shell out the extra 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should, that should be everything. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I have a leaderboard roundup. So. Uh, in honor of Amiibo being back, he's going to read every single one out. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, don't worry. If uh, if there are any that stand out, though, uh, please just feel free to shout them out. Like, for example, uh, Etienne with the 80% glitchless uh, 3DS Virtual Console World Record. Uh, I didn't include any of the Virtual Console ones on because they seem to be a fair bit behind the... You know, the... Well, this is only a recent split up of the yeah. categories from what I know. Yeah, 3DS has only really been added as a main leaderboard thing, which I think is driving some people to learn it. Yeah. But uh, Etienne over the 153.28 at the time there. Um, 
El Revolver, 385, the seventh place time on any percent glitch is a classic at 158.55. Pretty good time that. Oh, yellow's quiet this month. Yeah, yellow is quiet. Fifteenth uh, for Quantum Zacco. That definitely is not how it's pronounced, but we're all rolling with it. One thirty-two point seven nine four in any percent. A couple of uh, three D special console runs from Etienne as well for gold and silver. I'm surprised there's three. Gold and silver manipulus 3D SVC runs, just in total. <laughs> nice thumbnail. There is four. Wow. And then see for that one. Oh, it's only just one of them. That does not surprise me, to be fair. It is just 3DS, but. Uh, Etienne with the crystal, and then also second for Hippo Chan, a 353.52. Etienne's really been going in on the 3DS virtual console. Uli in 11th with a 201.39. Yeah, I don't think he's done more runs recently, but yeah, he got that very, very quickly. That was only yeah. like a day or two after he came back. I will admit, when I said that, in my head I was thinking Fire Red Leaf Green and I was going to say 20139 <laughs> for Fire Red Leaf Green. Uh, yeah, the Sapphire have... leaderboards are weird because it's like, it's there's eight people with sub two, and eighth is Macwing with a 158, and then ninth, I don't remember who it is, but it's like a 201. There's nobody with a 200 or a 159. It's Wanley with a 201, yeah. I just put yeah. the board. That's just strange. It's that's like everybody strange. that's played the game well enough gets a 158. Like, <laughs> I just... I Knowing the struggles that Sapphire went through over, again, being a boomer, being around for so long, <laughs> just knowing what Sapphire went through for so long, having that many people with, like, a 201 or even sub 2 is just absurd to me. To hear that a 201 is not even top 10 is disgusting. <laughs> the the Fire Red Leaf Green leaderboards are one more person away from having top 10 being two, sub 202. That's so Bearing weird. in mind that the record is a 2005x. <laughs> top 10 is almost within a minute. Yeah, that's absurd. With the wave in a 201.22 in, uh, in sixth, and then Amoeba getting the 202 flat, just missing out. Yeah, oh, I'm well happy with my 202. I do not care. I just wanted a sub 205, yeah. and I was happy to be done. 202 flat is really nice. You say you're happy to be, you were doing more attempts. I guess you were still. Yeah, that then. stopped on Tuesday. Because <laughs> that <laughs> game sucks. <laughs> To be fair, with the tournament now, uh, I'd probably expect Fire Red Leaf Green to fill out yeah, a bit be... because people are probably fed up with the game after grinding yeah. it. It's honestly, it's a really good game to play for about two months a year and then forget about, and then come back to it again for the tournament. <laughs> like honestly. Meanwhile, Wave is busy not leaving the game and just grinding round two so yeah round two is a completely different beast but yeah. yeah it's uh he was grinding any percent for a while but yeah i think he's uh, had enough of it for a while it's it's frustrating to play against a time like a 201 22 right i can imagine <laughs> i can fit for the 202 18. ekman's comment and, and pointed out first run not great it's a 207. <laughs> For first run, that's actually really good. Yeah. Also, he's like a, the semi-finalist of the tournament. Yeah. Like... Oh, that's silly. Boon twelve. <laughs> Boon twelve. Yeah. Boon twelve and thirteen. He's with... he's been on a lot of two thirty-one paces recently. Really? Yes. I would expect that man to be towards the top of the leaderboard by next month. 
Should we keep an eye out on then? Ekman also in Emeralds. In fourth on emulator 2.435. I only forgot the flow timer was on the layout. Oh, oh yeah, I was, I was going to say, oh, Amiibo with the one. <laughs> we talked <laughs> about that already. <laughs> but boom the as well. Though, with the... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, just with the, the em emulator record as well. Um, yeah. 131 is not a bad time by any means. That's uh, Anything that comes under a glitchless time in that category tends to be good. Uh, that's a pretty deserved first place. I don't imagine it'll last ages. But it just depends on who's next for... Because Emerald on emulator is kind of whack, so... I don't think fifth with a 57.35 on the Diamond Pearl. Any percent on the DS, do yes? Full extended, nice. And then we in its seventh with a 58.18. People are... Uh... People are getting some good runs in that. And then even on emulator, uh, I see with the 59.17. With the emulator world record there. Only one Gen 5 run, Yuki Sai, with a uh, Black 2, White 2 in 4th. A 3.26.16. XY, uh, Bicycle Cat, uh, with the 8th. 90% at 34258. Uh that game has been rough to her. <laughs> she's been she spent a while trying to get well that sounds like a dig, but she spent effort trying to get to the, the top ten and then very quickly got she went from ninth to eighth very, very quickly. Uh, I think yeah. she's quite happy with this time from the sounds of it though, because I've seen her stream learning a Gen 5 game um, with the help of Zypotic the other day. I know, I know. One of her goals was, was to. Right, yeah, that might be right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, it didn't sound quite right when I said Gen Five. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say. I know one of her goals was to to beat Garf's time. Um. And I think Garf has like a three forty five, so absolutely smashed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really good. It's really good. Um. Dynam in thirteenth with a three oh eight oh eight. In, let's go, uh, let's go. Peace, you aim percent no mount skips. I'm still a bit sad that they didn't call it arms. Like, is it arms was the other name? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's I actually like NMS is just gonna get uh, mistaken for no major skips. It does every time yeah. somebody who doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's the sad. first thing I think when I see NMS. Yeah, um, I think I don't know how much of this actually plays into it, but I feel like it was May that might have suggested that it was because of that reason. Because May also ran a game called Crosscode, where they have an any percent NMS, and uh, NMS for them I also think does not mean like, it's not no mouse <laughs> system. I think it means something else. Oh dear. So this basically, like... May is just <laughs> chaotic. Reverse badge order was named that so that it yep. sounded like reverse bottle adventure from AOT. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus, guys. Yeah. It's um, it's fun for like a week and then people have to explain. Yeah, exactly. You explained it for the twentieth time, you're like, ah, oh, I'm sick of this show now. Yeah. Um no the only I was gonna mention, uh there's actually a lot of times that people have gotten based on like you know, posting in the Discord and stuff that haven't been either submitted or haven't been verified. Um, Randall got a 301 in Eevee. Oh, yeah. Uh, I only have this because I have the the tournament sign-up spreadsheet where I've been keeping track. Uh, so Randall got a 301 in Eevee. Uh, T-Pat got a 304, a lower 304 uh, as his first run on digital. Isn't 301, like, really, really good? Yes. <laughs> oh, damn. Go Randall. 301 is very good. Um, yeah. Which 301s right now lock up the top five. Well, Etchy has the 258, which is disgusting. Yeah. Um, Amber has a 300. And then Wave, Randall, and Kick and Run Keith are all sitting there with a 301. Um, yeah, Ergote got a 307. 
Uh, Bouncy actually has a 316, so the 318 is here on the the roundup, but I got a 316 as well. Um, Kid Rocker PB'd the other day with a 317, so lots of uh, lots of movement there. We'll probably see more. Oh, Bouncy has a 314, apparently, according to chat. Damn. Oh, uh, you have to update the spreadsheet every day. Never always submit your PBs, you animals. <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn from Wave Warriors' mistake where you had no Sapphire PB for like a year. It's about having like a 157 or something stupid. I'll pretend that me not submitting my PB is the reason that my PB in Let's Go is from 2019. Hmm. <laughs> We're just going to pretend that I have PB and just forgot right. to submit it. Bro, I literally still have my old Emerald PB that has the manip that I didn't make in it. <laughs> you were too busy getting the moon record. <laughs> yeah. It's my oh, favorite yeah. tweet. Yeah, that was a brilliant tweet. You got to add to it, though. Also get finals in Fire Red Leaf Green. I was kind of hoping to. It would have been real funny to sneak a fire red record in there somewhere at some point. I've got the Astros. I could add the Emerald any percent one. I could add the Manip and the any percent to that. I don't know how many more rakes that I can kick flip downstairs. Like what you do, you just change it from being that one to the uh, the sideshow Bob, where there's all the rakes in the floor. <laughs> That is a genius idea. Also, Trevario though in eighth with the uh, AOP Pikachu eighth place, five thirty-three twenty-six. Uh, Sword Shield, Diapotic in eleventh with the uh, any percent in Sword a four twelve twenty. That candy floss. Oh, we're gonna sobble. <laughs> Just drillber, I think. Oh yeah, of course it is a drillber version now. I forgot about that. I should look. I still need to try thing. that run. Yeah, it seems I, super I should. Interesting. I don't know enough about it, so I should look into it. That's how stubborn I'm gonna be. Oh, I have to get around to doing a run with it though. Um, couple of uh Persia in third with the shield Japanese 1.2 plus a 4 11 34 uh Phoenix as well in second with 80% with DLC uh on the Japanese side for shield a 40102 uh couple of BDSP runs uh sick uh silver in, with a 325.43 and any percent glitch to Shining Pearl English No Turbo music off. I feel like that's a shorter name than normal. Have they combined the category? Uh, no. I think what you'll find is the longer category. No, the longer category wouldn't be any percent because we still haven't done the um the version stuff. I don't know. It does seem shorter, but yeah, I don't think anything's missing. Is what it is. A Legends Artist run for Catch Them All, third for Blood Dirk, and 850, 55. I was going to say 50 something, but yeah, 55. Um, not many Artist runs anymore, really. Let's see, it's not a common run now. I guess with Scarlet Violet coming out. But even then, I don't know. You can speak more to Legends Arceus, like with the, the quality of the runs, I guess. Wait, I did you do runs as well? No, not for PLA. Oh, okay. It's just etiquette. Like, um, do, you, do you feel like there should be more runners of that game, or...? Maybe? Um... I think it's a it's a tough game to get into um just because of the nature of the the run being so focused on like really understanding the decks with all of the different um you know goals or things that you can do to um 
you know, gain points and everything. So I, I think it's it's probably one of those things that if people are looking at it, they might um, end up backing away and going toward a more easier game just because it's a little bit daunting. Um, like I know for me personally, like the only reason I really put time into it is because I started like I, I did it like on release. Um, but even even knowing what I know, if I look at it now, I feel like it's too daunting for me to learn. Um, and like I, I spent months on it, so I think it's I think it's just a it's a tough game to get into. Bit of a shame, but yeah. Uh, Scarlet and Violet, ninth for Icarus, Icarus Hollow, a five thirty two thirty nine in glitchless. Any percent? Uh, it's all they're all gonna be glitchless. I'm pretty sure, unless there's a sneaky one from Crisis, but it doesn't seem like it. Um, Dynam in third for Path of Legends, a fifty two twenty two. It's a really uh, good time. Yeah, it is a really good time. Um, Spy the Sea in Starfall Street, a 129.03. Uh, Dynam in third there as well with a 129.46. Dynam's, I mean, I know, like, they've, like, they're new as of like the start of Scarlet Violet. Maybe, you no, know, it might have been around like a couple months before, right? If I rack my brain. But when I first saw the names on the Leadworld Roundup. So their speedrun.com account is February 20th of this year. Okay. Yeah, only like two to three months then. It's yeah, very focus old times. Mostly on the Switch side, uh, but like a 308 in Let's Go. You know, these times in Scarlet Violet, they have a 415 in Sword and Shield, 325 in BDSP. Like those are all really solid times. Yeah, really, really solid times. Fair placement. Oh, Iron. Seventh in uh, Victory Road. It's good 2041. What does it do the cha cha mean? I, I used Halucha. I don't know if I should be disappointed or not. <laughs> <laughs> I stubbornly refused. Like, you're stubbornly refused to do anything other than Sobble. I stubbornly refused to use Flamigo. I mean, I can respect that then. I can respect that. <laughs> Your argument was very solid. Um, Stadium, a fair few uh, Switch VC runs. Headbob in second with a 133.39. Interesting. Didn't know Headbob uh, gave that a try. Pokemon Stadium 2, complete the game. Fuzziness in second. That's a that's a name I've not heard in a while. Just drive twenty five hours. A two uh, twenty four fifty nine fifty seven. I'll say I mostly know a fuzzy because of Smash Bros and Sega Bass Fishing or something like that. I don't remember the actual name of the game, but just interesting to see fuzzy there. I know him from Smash Bros and I ran into him at a British marathon once. RDA in Battle Revolution. That's a uh, pretty standard. I think they're all single, but like they're the only runs in those categories. But still, they are world records. Yeah, ECG2 there, we mentioned that earlier. Uh, second on 100% for Switch for Sailor's Arclis. 25.30. Still over a minute behind the world record, but getting close. A pinball there that we also mentioned earlier. Second on emulator for Lamy Lamy. Um, a 336.38. Which, whilst... I mean, like, Randall's emulator is very good, but... Also, just shows like the with the uh, the three twenty five thirty, ridiculous, ridiculous run. 
Also, Swift in uh, eighth for the end of Sunday, 333.59. Warm up for GDQ. Here's all the PMD world records. <laughs> anything um yeah it probably missed with uh, the the percent no wonder male english emulator b dark ryan and the any percent are both part of the same run one's after or one, one's the the version that carries on after um eponymous with uh more beat no dark ryan world records i probably actually didn't mention this one i just completely skipped past explorers of sky when i was setting this list up you know, they're almost the same game to be fair they kind of not, they are not, but. Well, I didn't say no with the male Japanese emulator world record for upon them, I say 440 45. That is my bad though, to put that one in. Uh... Second place for uh, Shady Gamer on Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team uh, DX. I didn't say no password, no gummies. Uh, 244.21. That one I definitely should have put on. I just must have missed that one completely. Um, iron. Crystal clear, one badge glitchless, 2.5, 240. Uh, from Gold Dragon 130. Um, one batch is a category. Is it, is it just what they wanted? With like people who were in this game. Actually, how much do you know about this game? Because like the fan game stuff is a bit. Not a whole lot. Yeah. But it's like. Um, yeah, I don't know too much about it, but there's like a one badge category. You. Um... Not sure if you catch something high level to use it for the badge, but yeah, it's uh, kind of a weird game. Uh, it's a pretty interesting ROM hack. Not doesn't have too much play, at least from the speedrun side currently, but. Yeah. Um, shout out to Hiro Osan for uh, ruining the leaderboard roundup page. <laughs> <laughs> For the red blue category extensions. Actually completely messed it up. That's interesting. That's cool. Fair play. Um yeah. A few uh few old main pokes world records. Um Jim B with the no select glitch any percent uh world record. 908. I'm assuming that's is that Japanese only then? Or is it just Coincidence that Jim B just ran it on Japanese. Uh the select glitch stuff is Japanese only, yeah. Alright. Uh B Misty World Record for Grogia, 2334. Um that's one of the bounties, is it not? Yes. Yep. It beats Araya's time by a decent amount as well, I think. Grogia. Killing it in red in general, but a very good time. Blue Magma. Oh, uh, did Blue Magma end up finishing his run earlier? I know you were talking about him being on the pace at the start of the podcast. Like before the podcast. Uh, no, it died to the pace. Slowly got crippled, and I think it died to Winona or somewhere around there. But he was he was a minute ahead in the early game, so maybe it's Flannery actually. It might not have even been as late as Winona. Quite unfortunate. But we might have to get the old main pokes Blazer Cum World Record there. 252.26. Fire Leaf Green Ananan with the Manipulus World Record at 20609. And then a couple of Alt Pokes World Records. Battle Dome world record for uh, silver by Daco with a 28.37. Um, just shout out to shout out to both Battle Dome and Battle Pike for being the two best uh, two best uh, things in the Battle Frontier. And 
and no one in the call said anything against me, so they clearly agree, <laughs> and now I'm right. I don't know anything about this. Same. You know, did you never do the Battle Frontier? I did a little bit. I remember Pike, and I remember... Um, Pyramid. That's about it. I have no interest in all gold symbols. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, fair on like the category, that sounds like... But I mean, just as a kid, I loved playing them. Yeah. Well, no, I never really got into it that much, I won't lie. Oh, yeah, uh, no, it's so good. I'd always get, I'd always get thrashed in battle, though, but I loved it. <laughs> Rubentus with the Manipulus N presents uh, DS2 DS World Records, a 10120. Walter um, 68, nice. I think Walter's one of the good ones. Yeah. Better play that. Uh, and then also Jizzy with a 10306. Um, in the Power Grass, which is apparently not as good. I see all the French the French runners uh, are focusing on Heart of Gold Soul Silver again. It's like there's always a periodic German invasion of the Gen 1 leaderboards. Um, <laughs> yes, except it's every month. It's, <laughs> it's sometimes it's it might be different games, but there'll always be a section where there'll be a lot of French runners, and it's cool. It's cool to see. It's always cool to see. But yeah, uh, I guess this month it was our gold soul silver again. Because I think it always does rotate between the gen 4 ones. It might actually just always be hard gold soul silver. But I feel like they do do with the other ones every now and then at least. It's just how much does my brain remember a month ago. And that... That is a... Uh, something else there. I was going to say, I would tell you what it is, but my brain's forgot. <laughs> Um, but I do want to point out, all main pokes centric. Kayoch? Kayosh? Uh, either way, a 9.30.38 world record. Just... And my assumption, because I know a lot of the DS games use the like centric plus to indicate that it's centric and also for it. Uh, that this is actually just centric. Yeah. So no this. evolving. That's my assumption. I have to look at it. Uh, did... Is that... it? <laughs> Wait. Yep. Stopped evolving. Oh, oh, wow. That's commitment. I want to. I, oh, I was going to say, why are they on surge where they split when they're just being lost? They, they split for Lance, of course. Cool. My brain. Um, you, uh, a few French runners on the black white. Uh, Gilafe. With the uh, Manipulus world record, the 326.33. Uh, oh, the. Is custom status new for the DS? Oh, for like black white as well. I don't feel like I've seen that that often. If it's the case or not, I am not knowledgeable. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> oh, it's been a Tokyo, thing for a Tokyo while. Tokyo is the one that's knowledgeable for DS. <laughs> According to Rubentis, it's been a thing for a while. All right, then it's just me being a fool. All right. Let's go solo diploma. Uh, Negarushi. A 60120. That is a world record. Are you like one of the other people that ran that, Edika? Yeah, and I did I did a slightly different I don't care one way or the other. I did a slightly different rule set where I basically I would only play one game at a time unless I was um trading and i know a lot of people who have done something like this will essentially attempt to do like a two games two controllers at the same time sort of thing um which i've done for any percent and it is a nightmare but um 
But yeah, so that's like mine's like nine hours and some odd minutes, uh, which is sort of explains some of that difference. Another month, another Morgrim trade up main world record. Uh, a Mew this time, a 40202. I think Morgrim has the most world records. Let me check this. Uh, do I still have. I do have the page still. I'm aware it's not fully up to date anymore. But it'll at least give me an idea. Yep. Uh, Morgrim has more world records than anyone for category ascensions, at least. Like, I think that would extend over to if you included both. Uh, one more than Akiri. Who is like the one of the rumble runners that has a lot of world records? Just some a little fun tidbit of knowledge there, I guess. Uh, Pokemon Stadium, uh, actual stadium. This is not part of Battle Revolution. The Battle Revolution has their own category essential now. RDA though with world records in Prime Cup, Poke Cup, and Kids Club. Congrats there. And then it's the standard uh, RDA Battle Revolution records there. Uh, training card game, new game plus any percent. Uh, the Jaffa Man 5 in second with a 48.15. And then rounding off, Miracle B RTA, which was um, a joke that, well not a joke, it was on April 1st, they did, uh, everyone a lot of people in the PMD, like not PMD, in the uh, color code uh, decided that they were going to do Miracle B, which is just the one who is dressed up like Mirror B. It has like the music for Mirror B, like it's, the theme is Miracle B's, oh, Mi is Mirror B's theme like shift pitched, like it's shift pitched. It sounds awful, but it's amazing. But yeah, so they did a bunch of that, and I guess some, uh, some people did more runes after the fact. So, Ryzakun with the RTA world record, and then Deacon Ryzakun also getting a tied save file world record. Fair play. But that is the lead world round up done. Finished and complete. Meva. Hi. Thank you for coming back on the podcast. Anytime. Um, I'm glad I'm relevant again. <laughs> you have been relevant many times. Uh huh. You it's just a sweet lie. Podcast. What was it? It was. <laughs> you don't need to stroke my ego, don't worry. I'm just fucking him out. It's, it's nice to be back. It's good to have you back. Um, I would do podcast guests, but I forgot to update the command, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Just go follow Amoeba if you're not already. <laughs> you know what? I always forget about it's this. It's in the chat. I forget that we have like, the, shout -out, oh. like, the Twitch shout out thing. What was it though? Um, Oh, I can't give another shout out for a minute and a half. Okay, Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> so do Waves and Zeeks, I guess not. Apparently not, yeah. So thank you to Wave and to uh well thank you to Wave for being on, thank you to Zeke for getting the pre recorded part. Uh Erica, Ayn. Thank you for hosting once again. Always a Thank pleasure. Thank you, Zuka, who was time. able to make it for the first 30 minutes, but then had to leave. Um, yeah, our next podcast um, probably won't be the first Saturday of the month. We might be doing it on Sunday, so stay tuned. Uh, follow us on on Twitter. Keep an eye on uh, on that if you uh, are interested, or if you follow, you'll get a notification when we go live. So, 
Yes. Yes, I'm even linking the Twitter. Follow the PSR podcast Twitter, where there will be the most up to date information if we remember to tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, that also, uh, as a case, you happen to have the link on hand, if you want to put the Let's Go Tournament in again. I do have it. Nice. Um, oh no, I'm looking at, all right, here we go. This is for the Let's Go Tournament Discord. Let's go ahead and join up there. If you are interested, like I said, in either participating, commentating, or just spectating, want to keep up to date with the races. Or being on tech. Or being on tech, if you'd like to help out. Yeah, no, me would be useful and not just right. banning people. For oh, right. having, like, for... <laughs> Slash time out and then 11310. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's everything, so I hope everyone has a good rest of the day, or evening, wherever they are. Stay safe, take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.